Trump start war, I don't hear nothing about the coronavirus anymore. So give a, give a hand for Putin too, you know what I mean? <laughs> good job, good job. You know, now, now I'm here, I don't hear nothing about, about the Rona no more. You know, I'm not hearing, I'm, I'm, they taking, um, you ain't, got, you ain't got to be forced to take the vaccination no more. For now, that's what I hear, you know what I mean? So I'm like, damn, this dude start war. You don't, you know, you don't hear about Corona no more. War into the disease. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so all praises, man. So yo, yo, D gonna be gonna be going in, man. D doing a continuation on the last class he did, the war to end all wars. Yeah. You know, um, he doing a con, we doing, he doing a con, um, continuation of that. You know what been going on right now in Ukraine? All right. A lot of people is confused. A lot of people thinking that that's going to start World War Three. Putin going to drop bombs on America, you know. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into the scriptures and give you brothers and sisters the sense of what, what's going to happen in the near future. Okay, is Russia going to drop bomb on Putin? What's going to happen? What's going to start World War Three? Okay, so you'll take your get your pens and paper together and take notes, all right? Dick? There's a lot of notes to take. A lot of notes to take. So I suggest you I suggest you guys pay attention. Um online. Well praises, hope you um pay attention as well. Uh let's begin. So it's part two. Um war the, the war to end all wars. We're gonna open up with Revelation nine and twelve. All right, 9 and 12. Revelation 9 and 12. The book of Revelations. Chapter 9, verse 12. One woe is past. And so he, the scripture says, one woe is past. The woe is referring to is the woe that John the Revelator saw, which is a war. One war is past because he, he was shown the vision that this war would take place in the last days. All right? So that war was past. And he describes that this is going into World War I. Okay? Along with this chapter. Read on. And behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And there come two more woes or wars afterwards. Now, get chapter 11 and 14. Now, once again, World War I has taken place. So Revelation 9 took place. You understand? Yes, no, one, one, through four took, one through four took place. And nine, it took place. All right? 17? No, not quite. All right? 11, 14. The book of Revelations, chapter 11, verse 14. The second woe is past. The second woe, maybe he referred to three woes earlier. The first woe was passed, two come hereafter. Now he's saying the second woe was passed. Go ahead. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Behold, the third woe cometh quickly. So the second woe is referring to what? World War II. World War II is the second woe. And behold, read it first again. The second woe is passed. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Quickly, the third woe cometh quickly. Now, 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 now. World War II was a very pivotal time in history because that was the time in which they, they discovered how to split atoms. The theory of relativity, Einstein, Oppenheimer, and these things all took place. That's how um, nuclear weapons were created eventually. Hydrogen bomb, and you had nuclear fission. Nuclear science was born, and now we are in a now we are in a period where all these major superpowers or kingdoms possess nuclear capabilities. And therefore, once a, once a land has, possesses a certain amount of nuclear capabilities, it becomes a superpower. Like China, Russia, America, these are superpowers. Other nations have them, but those three are the mega, those are the kingdoms. Those three are kingdoms around this earth. America being the top one. And Russia being its rival, because it's the same people. It's like two brothers having, it's like two, it's like basically Russia and America's sibling rivalry. Mm. It's sibling rivalry. That's all it really is. Okay? Both of them is Edom. Now, no different from the Greeks and Romans. Same people. Same people. 
All right, so now, give me the videos to prove that there's, there's the third woe is coming, but so far two have passed. Give me the first video I want. Um, I want to... So I want, I want the, the hill, UFO disabled. YouTube. I'm going to show you that. Um, matter of fact, give me Revelation 7 first. Revelation 7 and 1 first. Before, let's prepare that video for now. Revelation 7 and 1. I'm going to show you guys that the, that, 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 the, that the powers that, that the nations, not the nations, I'm bugging. The powers in the heavens understand that two woes have passed already and they're holding back the third. Revelation 7 and 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. He saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, each angel for each corner. Go ahead. Holding the four winds of the earth. And, then, and they're holding back four winds. So you may ask yourself, well, winds blow, the wind blows every day. How are they holding back these winds? Because these winds are not normal winds, as we're going to read on. Read. That the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Now, the wind blows in the sea, it blows in a tree, and it blows on the earth. So what wind is this? Give me, um, read on. It's going to say it. Verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth. Given to what? Given to hurt the earth. Given to sea. hurt the earth. So this wind is a wind of destruction. It's war. Read the next verse. Saying, hurt not the earth. So these angels on, on each four corners of the earth are saying, these winds hold them back so they, so they do not hurt the earth. Go ahead. Neither the sea. Nor the sea. Nor the trees. Nor the trees. So we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. Until Israel is sealed. So what's, what's stopping them from being a world war is until it, the rest of Israel, the remnant of, remnant of Israel, is gathered from the four corners, which is very, very few at this time. Very, very few. Few. All right, now, give me Jeremiah 51 and 1 to go into the winds. So you say, oh, you're making that up. How do you know the winds is referring to destroying winds? Let's see, Jeremiah 51, verse 1. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon. I will raise up against Babylon. This Babylon here is in reference to the Babylon of today. I can prove it. Read on. And against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me. A destroying wind. A what? A destroying wind. A destroying wind. That's the wind that the angels are holding back in the four corners. A destroying wind. Now, jump to verse... To prove what Babylon this is, jump to verse... 25. Let's see which Babylon this is. Verse 26. 20, mm -hmm. Verse 25. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain. He's referring to Babylon as a destroying mountain. Go ahead. Saith the Lord, which destroys all the earth. And this Babylon is known to destroy the earth, the sea, the, the air, people, crops. Destroy the earth. Go ahead. And I will stretch out my hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks. Because this mountain that we roll down, we take out of power. Go ahead. And will make thee a burnt mountain. And will make Babylon what? A burnt mountain. A burnt mountain. Ancient Babylon was never burned. It was never burned. It was taken over. It was simply um, um, from one landlord to the other. From Babylon to Persians. It was never burned. It was, conquered, it, was taken, it was conquered from the inside, and the Persians took over. Okay? So this says it will be a burnt mountain. Read on. Next verse. going to prove it again. Verse 26. And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations. But thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. You shall be desolate forever. Saddam Hussein, his backyard was Babylon. Outside his window, look out his window, he had Babylon right there. People lived there. That's my point. So it's not referring to ancient Babylon, because people lived there. That's Iraq. But the modern Babylon will be burnt and rolled down from power. That's the Babylon of today, which is the United States of America, the land of the north. So there's winds holding back the destruction regarding that land as well, among others. Now, give me 2 Ezra 13 and 5. 
Second Ezra 13 and verse 5. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 13, verse 5. And after this, I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men. There was gathered together a multitude of men. Go ahead. Out of number. Out of number. Go ahead. From the four winds of the heaven. From what? From the four winds of the heaven. Because these were armies that possess nuclear capabilities. Destroying winds, referring to armies. Destruction. Read it from the top again. And after this, I beheld. Now, below. understand this right here, this verse here. Is, when I, is, when, is the aftermath of World War III, pretty much. When the nation's in the midst, I'm sorry, in the midst of World War III, what takes place. Read on. And after this, I beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men. Armies. Out of number, from the four winds of the heaven. North, south, east, and west. To subdue the man that came out of the sea. To subdue the man that came out of space. That's when Christ returns, and Christ shows up. When he rolls up, they're going to stop fighting each other and say, let's fight this big Negro flying in the sky in front of us here. The real Superman shows up. Not Kal-El, Jesus, the Messiah, him. He show up here. Now, give me um, the video now. Let me, I'm going to show y'all in real time Angels holding back the four winds. Watch this. Air Force officers have shared that almost 70 years ago, they witnessed multiple unidentified aerial phenomenon sightings over two U.S. nuclear bases. Shockingly, the men also claim that these 1964 aerial sightings occurred nearly simultaneously with the spontaneous immobilizing of the base's nuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles. Pause. Suggesting that whatever... So these chariots immobilized all at the same time wherever there's nuclear bases they disable them so they cannot use them or practice practice using them continue or whoever was up there successfully disabled the ICBMs from above friend of the show Emily Jashinsky attended a Tuesday press conference held at the National Press Club in Washington where a panel of former USAF officers detailed those incidents and others like them According to Emily's reporting, the group called for congressional investigations into the sightings and said they felt they had been ignored previously. One former officer told the debrief at the event, quote, now the question is, will the government tell us the truth about what they've known now for decades? So, uh, look, obviously there, I tend to be more skeptical, I think, than anyone else involved in producing this show for our viewers, that aliens are real and doing things. Uh, I, I do think they're China, Russia, you know, other, other governments with technologies or that have been a little ahead of ours that we've been different, not understood. No. That is, is a reality. I don't know about the aliens, but what do you think, Kim? Well, I, I mean, look, this has been reported on for a long time, over a decade. There are these um, many other people, Robert Hastings, Dr. Stephen Greer, they have been bringing up the the sightings and, and witnesses to these sightings and the fact that there have been numerous accounts from some of our top military officials, people that we've trusted with nukes. I mean, if we trust them with nukes, they're clearly not crazy people. And they have uh, they have been testifying, saying that, look, there is something is blowing up nukes out when we when we send them out into space. Pause. They're getting blown up. Something is blowing up the nukes when we send them into space. They're not doing this until the Lord says so. They're doing nothing until God says so. They're blowing up the nukes when they shoot them in space. Continue. Actually, they're being disabled. Um, our nuclear facilities are being disabled. And this is something that has been reported Pause. by not only the so United States. So when they try to press a button to even shoot them, they can't. They're disabled. Someone turn the lights out. That's what the Lord is doing. Turn the lights out. No, 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 no. Can't do that. Can't shoot those. Continue. Watch. It's going to tell you when, it, when they started. Watch. Other nuclear countries as well. Pause. And Other nuclear countries as well have experienced the same thing. That's your China. That's your Russia. That's your America. That's your Iran. Every place where there's nuclear capabilities, the chariots is like, no, not yet. Israel wake up first, then have at it. But not yet. Continue. Their thinking is that there is something. Come on. 
sites. They're getting blown up, essentially, or they're being disabled. Um, our nuclear facilities are being disabled. And this is something that has been reported by not only the United States, but other nuclear countries as well. And their thinking is that there is something out there that is an alien, uh, you know, not of this world life form Angels. that is monitoring the United States. They say that these, that these, uh, the monitoring of the nukes and the disabling of the nukes happened since the U.S. dropped the nukes, two of them, on Japan. Pause. And the theory. Pause. That's when they stopped. That's when they started. So as soon as they dropped nukes on Japan, they said, that's it. Because the second woe had to happen. They would have stopped that too. They said, now nah, let that go ahead. That the second world take place. But it says after they drop nukes in Japan, then they start disabling the nukes after that. Because it's not time yet. The third world is coming, but not now. Because all Israel, the rest of Israel, must be sealed. And notice he said that, they, that there's these, these beings are, have, are watching America. <laughs> They're watching America and the nukes. Continue. The theory is that that event... Um, resonated out in the universe, and some and the more intelligent life form says, "What the heck are those humans doing?" God. And they came down, and, you know, and they were monitoring us, and they said, "Okay, you guys are dangerous because whatever it is you're doing is dangerous for the universe, not Eat just em. for your your space in the world uh, or in the universe." And mm -hmm. and they started to monitor and start to disable. And since then, whenever we've put nukes out there, in, you know, out into space, they've things have happened. Uh, nuclear sites are being disabled. And so this is something that some of the military officials are, are kind of trying to say, well, see, this is a, a, a national security problem. It is. Uh, you know, that there's somebody out there trying to mess with our nuclear arsenal. It seems to me that if there is out there, which I am one that believes that there's, of course, life forms out there in the world. I think it, there's no way we're alone. Um, if they are out there and they are disabling our nukes, they're not doing it because they're a threat. To us, they're doing yeah. it because we're a threat to ourselves and maybe we're a threat to some aspects of the universe. Ryan, you think we've, we've angered so, the... Yeah, she's right and wrong at the same time because they are a threat, just not to us. <laughs> to them and her. If she's, if she's Israel, then she's good. Well, or, my, or not, if she don't repent. Hey. Or eat them. The, the scripture says, if, if Christ don't intervene, they're going to destroy this earth. Yes. You know, with their nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. So right now, we got the angels... The angels, as, as they keep testing these weapons and so forth, the angels is holding that back. The angels is disabling it, disabling the weapons when they're testing them and so forth. You show that video? Yeah, look at the next video. Look at the next video. Okay, we'll okay. Show you, I'm going to give you an example. They show you exactly what the chariot does. Now, this is on court. This is on, on FBI documents because it was banned. Now, they've opened it to the public now. You can read it because I brought it out in class way back where they have a FBI document. You go into the FBI website. You look at it up, and it tells you a. Fl they call the um the topic, the top of the paper says a flying roll. They call it the flying roll. They call it, and then um, um, planes come near it, they disintegrate, trying to attack it. They get destroyed just coming near it. You're not beating God. It's not happening ever. Got the next video I want. This next um UFO video. Number four. We're watching 8 News Now at 11. Officially, the uh, U.S. government ended its study of UFOs in 1969 because it assured the public there is no proof the phenomenon represents a threat to national security. But what if these unknown aircraft showed an interest in our nuclear weapons? A group of more than 150 military veterans, missile officers, security personnel, including many who worked at the Nevada test site, say they've seen mystery intruders over nuclear facilities. George Knapp of the I-Team is here with this story. George? Uh, of course, we're not going to jump any conclusions who they right. are. What, what they're up to, uh, you know, we don't know who is piloting these craft or why they're poking around, but you dozens know. of witnesses and thousands of pages of documents suggest someone is monitoring our nukes. The Department of Energy admits there's a long history of UFO activity over nuclear weapons facilities elsewhere, but zero cases at the former Nevada test site. Now a new film explores some of the most dramatic episodes that include our backyard. In the darkest days of the Cold War, atomic weapons were routinely exploded above ground at the Nevada test site, the most so nuked so place deep. on Earth. Paul, in so 1955, test site. Fort so they were allowed to they have a testing site where they test their nukes, how powerful they are and so forth. So these were occasionally allowed to, to, be, to be 
used and exploded, whatever they, blow, they detonate them, just to see how powerful they are. But watch this, keep going. 14 A-bombs were detonated as part of Operation Teapot, witnessed by thousands of military personnel in trenches and thousands more test site employees. But there were other observers as well. Oh, it was like a, you watch uh, the movie Hulk. That's an example. They, he, he lived in that little in that area. So when you watch the movie Hulk, they, they, they based that upon this situation here, when they were testing nuclear weapons on in um, Vegas, or even Nevada. Okay, keep going. What we call the flying saucers. They were pretty prevalent at the test site during those years. At least a dozen former test site employees have told similar stories about unknown aircraft showing up hours or days after an atomic blast. Author and investigator Robert Hastings has spent more than 40 years locating and interviewing military veterans, missile officers, and others who worked in various parts of the atomic weapons program. The reason why these guys are hiding their faces and they're old is because they were told to shut up and don't say nothing. We will kill you. So now that they're old, they well, I'm old. You can come if you want. Now I'm living my life. Do what you want now. Because they're old. So they can speak on these things. They'll just come up and see now old guys that saw things. But these guys saw things in their youth. They were told not to discuss. In the, in, in the documents that, that are, are released to the public now, these guys are the ones that wrote them, saying what they saw. Keep going. Graham. More than 150 of them so far. They've all told the same story. That, in fact, UFOs have routinely monitored our nuclear weapons going back decades and on occasion apparently have actually interfered with the functionality of those weapons. In addition to the eyewitness accounts, thousands of pages of formerly 49? classified CDA? documents have been released to buttress these That's tales. The, the I-Team's own FOIA request, filed in 1992, produced a thick stack of documents from the Department of Energy, indicating UFO incidents over every major atomic weapons facility dating to the late 40s, over Los Wait, Alamos well, National well, Lab, where the bombs were... After World dis- War II, that's 48. This is 45 was the war. So after, 40, after World War II, they started to stop and interrupt nuclear testing because it's not the time. Keep going. Designed over Hanford, where the plutonium was processed. Even when plutonium was, was processed, they were there. Over what? Even when plutonium was placed, they were there. Anywhere the nuclear nukes were found, bases underwater, in, Ala- uh, in a, um, Antarctica, hidden places, they're there. They can't hide nothing. Keep going. Right. Hastings, however, has found plenty. Civilians living near the proving ground often observed the aerial discs, discs. sometimes we'll flying in large formations, and subsequently notified the Air Force. This is a clip from a new documentary film, the culmination of Hastings' years of research. The film includes chilling incidents where UFOs have not only infiltrated restricted airspace over nuclear missile bases, but on occasion have disabled yeah. ICBMs cloud, right? the cloud and put the military go back, on high go back. alert. In one go back, look, a floating cloud. Go back. Right there. Of research. The film includes chilling incidents where UFOs have not only infiltrated restricted airspace over nuclear missile bases, but on occasion have disabled ICBMs and put the military on high alert. In one dramatic incident from the film, military photographers using telescopic lenses watched a UFO disable a warhead used in a missile test fired from Vandenberg. And flying out over the Pacific. Suddenly, this domed disc, an object with a dome, came in to frame, circled the warhead, which was flying about eight or ten thousand miles an hour, and it flew off. Shot four beams of light at it, whereupon the warhead, dummy warhead, fell into the Pacific Ocean, and the UFO left the facility. UFO incidents at the Nevada test site became so routine, according to a. Esau will not do what he wants to do. Esau will do what God allows him to do. That's the point. So when these guys shoot these nukes in space to try to test, these are ICBMs. These are missiles that can go from one land to the other. They're like, nope, not yet. Not yet. Regular missiles, you can shoot those. But the ones that can go into space and go from one land to the other, nah, not yet. Four wins. Give me um the website on. Okay, I'm okay. Yo, go to Zechariah 5 and read that for me. Yeah, regarding the um, saucer yeah. or discs. Yep. Get that and read that. A lot of you brothers and sisters might be new, and I know we got Christians watching us. We got federal agents watching us and so forth. Yeah. 
Listen, man, this is what, let's go into the scripture and show you all what that, what that is. Okay? Mm -hmm. So read there for me. Zechariah 5 and 1. The book of Zechariah, chapter 5, verse 1. Then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. So Zechariah saw what? A flying roll. He saw a flying roll. What's that called today? He saw called that today UFOs. Or UAPs. Okay. Read on. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof of 10 cubits. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. So he says, This is the curse that goeth over the face of the whole earth, meaning the UFOs, okay, that they, you, you are seeing, what they so called unidentified flying objects. Okay, it's a curse that goeth forth over the whole earth. Read on. For everyone that still have shall be cut off as on this side according to it. So what's written on it is everybody that steal it. This is a curse going on for who? For Esau to understand that his end is coming soon. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a, it's a curse that going out over the earth for him that steal it. Okay, for Esau, no, for him to know that his end is coming soon. Why? Because how did he get this land America? He stole it. Okay, how did he get Europe? He stole it. Every land that this man inherited, he stole it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a curse that going, going forth in the land of the thief. Read that again. The curse. Then said he unto me, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stilleth shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off on that side. Have Esau swear? Have he called himself a Jew and so forth? Yes. He going to be cut off. And okay. God we trust. Yep. He's saying God we trust, but he legalized homosexuality. Okay. So that's what this flying role is written in the scriptures. It's a chariot. Read verse 4. Okay. So what it's going to do. Verse 4. I will bring it forth. See, it the, is the flying roll. He'll bring the flying roll forth. Go ahead. Saith the Lord of hosts. And it shall enter into the house of the thief. House of who? The thief. The thief. Into the house of the thief. The man that steals lands and nationalities and people and resources and, pe and everything else. Go ahead. And into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. I'm a Jew. I'm a Christian. Are you, um, swearing upon the Bible in the courthouse. Swearing the president in on the Bible and don't use the Bible. Swear falsely. Go ahead. And it shall remain in the midst of his house. That's why they always see him. They say he's, oh, they're always watching America. <laughs> he shall stay in the midst of his house. Because most of the sightings that they have of, of chariots is here. Most sightings of all the, of those EO, UAPs are in America. Of all lands is here. This is the place of the thief. Read on. And shall consume it with the timber thereof. What, what, will, he, what will his role do? And shall consume it with the timber thereof, and the stones thereof. Consume means destroy. That's why they did a movie called Independence Day. Battle Los Angeles. War of the Worlds. The day the earth stood still. These are Esau's renditions of him actually defeating this chariot here. That will never happen. And he knows it will never happen. Independence Day. <laughs> what the guy said in the movie, well, is there a way that we can... Uh, what can we do that we can establish peace? <laughs> Die. <laughs> Die. That's the correct answer. That's what the angels That's said. That's what the alien, alien said. That's the correct answer. Burnt Mountain. Give me a, um, what I asked you for earlier, before that. Ezekiel, yeah, Ezekiel, regarding the, um, the flying roll. I mean, you guys are crazy. Those are aliens. No, they're not aliens. They're aliens to you. They're not alien to us. We know what they are in the Bible. Yeah, ask your, ask your pastor, ask your pastors, you black Christians, ask your pastors, what's them things that be in the sky? Mm -hmm. Ask them. They, gonna tell, they don't got no answers for you, man. Okay, but we the Israelites, we got the answers because the Bible explains all things. And there's a video of a guy saying that these things found around, these UAPs, have been around since biblical time. Those are his exact words on the news. So they know what they are. They, they just play dumb because you don't know anything. But we know and they know. That's why they watch us and watch our videos to see how much we know. And we watch them, we watch them to see how much they know. And it ain't much. 
What is that? Will, the, will within the will? Ezekiel 1? No, I want. You know what I want, Jess? Yes, sir. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, verse 6, to, uh, verse uh, 15. Me, all right, jump to verse 15. No, mm, I don't want to read too much and cut into the class. Uh, 16? Yeah, 16 is fine. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, verse 16. Read verse 15. 15. Yes, sir. Because he saw calls, he's, uh, I want that, I want that. Over verse 14, sharp, fast they are, 14. Yes, sir. The book of Ezekiel. No, I'm sorry, 13, 13, 13. I'm sorry, 13, 13. <laughs> 13, 13, 13. I like, I like this chapter, I'm sorry. The book 13. of Ezekiel, chapter 1, verse 13. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. That's how black they were. They were black. There's a video that Captain Isaac did a long time ago called The Chariots of God are Black. And a white guy there, and a woman asked him, he said, you saw brown beings in, this, in the ship? He said, no, black. <laughs> he didn't correct her. No, 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 black. How, how tall were they? Oh, he said, oh, basically judging by the doorway of the, of the vehicle, they were about 20 meters. That's seven feet tall. So you imagine you, a white guy... Going on land on the moon, keep floating around. <laughs> on earth, they beating our ass. Dogs on us, holding us down the street. Sick and dog, beating us with nightsticks. You go on the moon, you see niggas with no helmets on, standing there watching you with a helmet on. On the moon. Seven feet my height and, and beyond with wings. That's insane. That's what these guys are. Listen, don't, whatever you saw, don't say nothing. Where the black astronauts? Where they at? They ain't nothing go up there. You're you going to find family up there. No, nah, nigga, you're going to stay up black behind right in the base and just <laughs> and, and play, with the, play with the batteries. Yeah. Here, nigga, play with the batteries. Let the white people go up there and see what's going on. Yo, that's Then like, one black I want there blew up. Yeah. There was one black man, a Hispanic woman, on the, going up there. Most I was like, nah, no, you're, you're going to tell. Nah. Blow it up. Well, he saw stuff blow it up. One of them. But either way, is the Lord. But you get my point. They ain't letting Jake up there. You right. know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah, that's why I was... As they came back after the moon landing, Ronald Reagan, he started a program called the Star Wars Wolf. Program. Yep. And the program was to defend Earth from outside, o- outside forces. In, in forces or invasions. Yep. Okay, because why? Because there, he saw the report. Okay, when they came back, the report was there. Listen, we saw black people in space, man. Mm-hmm. You know, we saw angels. We saw some crazy stuff up there. You know, so Ronald Reagan, that's why he was so hard on black people, man. That's why he was so hard on our people, because they understand the prophecies. Mm-hmm. Cause, okay? Because they understand if we're oppressing them here, and they have people up there looking like them, when they come here, who are they going to defend? Who are they going to save? They ain't coming to save us. If we're beating and killing those that look like them up there, we got a problem. He saw things deep. We don't think that. We don't think that far. He saw knows if the Messiah is black, he ain't coming to save me. It's that easy. It's that simple. Read verse 15. Oh, I'm sorry, verse uh, 13 again. Read 13 again. Yeah. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. Black. And like the appearance of lamps. And they had to glow like, like the last dragon. That's what they had to glow all around them. Go ahead. That's what that means. Go ahead. It went up and down among the living creatures. It, the, the glow, the power went up and down their body. Them black super saiyans with wings ran fl- all over the place. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. And they had lightning all over. This, that's where they get it from. These nations have no creativity. Their creativity comes from the Bible. Go ahead. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of light. That's how fast they move. One instant, over here, they're over there, they're over here, they're over there. Fast as lightning. Faster than Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt ain't no damn Bolt. These is the Bolts. Angelic Usain Bolts all over the plan place. Go ahead. Verse 15. Now, as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one will upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. And they had, that makes some more creatures. They had a black face here, animal face here, here, and here in the back. Go ahead. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a barrel. So the wheels, the chariots are green. Go ahead. And they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was as it were a will in the middle of a will. So what they saw, what they was over, what was hovering over them, was a was a wheel within a wheel. That's the chariot. That's what they're seeing. Go ahead. When they went, they went upon their four sides. When they moved, they didn't turn at the turn because they have four faces. They just move from side to side and have to turn because they had a face on each side. Go ahead. And they turned not when they went. They didn't have to turn because they had a face on each side. They can just go back, 
forward. That's what they had to do is move back and forward. Back, forward, left and right. Go ahead. As for their rings. As for the rings, those chariots above them. Go ahead. They were so high that they were dreadful. And their rings were full of eyes round about them. You call forward. those windows. Go ahead. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. When the, when the angels move, the wheels move. So you're thinking those chariots are moving by themselves? No, you don't see what's under it. You don't see what's in it. It's moving with it. When those chariots are around, it's the angel there moving with it because it's part of it. Go ahead. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. So when the chariot moves up, because there's an angel there moving it up. Either he's outside of it or he's inside of it. That's their cars. That's their vehicles. That's why in the slavery, we sing certain songs on the, on the plantation. Swing low what? Sweet chariot, come forth to carry me home. Because we knew what they were. Christians and FBI, you know what they are. Well, Christians don't know. You FBI know what I'm talking about. What verse is that? No, verse 19. Verse 20. Verse 20. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against the them. The wheels were above them. Go ahead. For the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. Because the spirit or the power of the angels was made the, the power of the vehicle, powered the chariots. All right? That's why they move so fast the way they do. So I want. So now you know what the flying wheel is or roll in a roll is. Which you saw on screen a few seconds ago. Now, give me the map of countries with nuclear weapons. So remember why we went here. We went, we went here. The, the point we're trying to bring out is that the four winds right. is the angels on them that's holding back the, the, that nuclear destruction, that right. third world war. That's the four winds. The armies are the four armies of the earth and their nuclear capability. Right. So show them that. Put that, put that up again. World's nuclear move our move our picture off. The world's nuclear armed states possess a combined to total of every of nearly thirteen thousand eighty nuclear weapon warheads. More than ninety percent belong to more than ninety percent of the nukes <laughs> belong to Russia and the U.S. Superpowers. These are kingdoms. Approximately nine thousand six hundred warheads are in military service, with the rest awaiting dismantlement, which is not going to happen. That's all. N nonsense talk to keep you from being afraid. You see, America all by itself got the most. Then they're almost the most. All right? And that, see, it's, it's not pointing to Central America. It's not pointing to South America. It's pointing to North America. That's where the nukes are because that is the capital. That is the, the head of the beast, the belly of the, be the belly of the beast. The North country. All right? Now, go over to your right, you see Russia has estimate, guesstimate, because way, they have way more than this. Six, I'm going to prove that it has, they have more than this. 6,257 they claim to have. So that's the Russia. Now, Russia is, is the largest of Europe, European countries. It extends, into the, then, it extends into the Europe and into the Near East. All the way down to the Far East. Russia is massive. Then you have India. I know India had them. India got them. Got them. Then you have who else? China, of course, has them. North Korea, um, which is part of South Korea, and Japan's right there. They have it. France has them. And then Britain has them. UK has them. Okay? Now go down to where it says um, nuclear weapon states. Nuclear weapon states. Keep going down. This is all. I don't care about this stuff. Go down, down. Nuclear weapon states. Right here. Read right there. You got it, Jess? Yes, sir. Nuclear weapon states. The nuclear weapon states, NWS, are the five states. Five states. Go ahead. China, France, Russia, United Kingdom, and the United States. That right there is north, south, east, and west. That's what that is. Go ahead. Officially recognized as possessing nuclear weapons by the NPT. The treaty recognizes these states' nuclear arsenals, but under Article 6 of the NPT, they are not supposed to build and maintain such weapons in perpetuity. In 2000, the NWS committed themselves to an unequivocal undertaking to accomplish the total elimination of their nuclear arsenal. That ain't happening. Go ahead. Because of the secretive nature... Because with, of the secretive nature... Go ahead. ...with which most governments treat information about their nuclear arsenal... You're not going to show all your cards. So you're going to say, oh, we got 6,000. Meanwhile, they got 6 million. Go ahead. 
Most of the figures below are best estimates. Most of the figures you see we just read earlier, 5,000, 6,000, they have way more. Go ahead. Of each nuclear weapon state's nuclear holdings, including both strategic warheads and shorter range and lower yield nuclear bombs, generally referred to as tactical nuclear weapons. So they have big bombs and they have small bombs. Some that travel across the state, some that travel, you have domestic bombs and international bombs. That's the ICBMs. All right? So they have way more than what we read earlier. Way more. So the angels are the ones that say, nah, nope, you're not shooting that one. Test that one. Nope, not that one. On all four winds. Go back to the map again. So you have west, that's the United States. North, that's Russia, France, United Kingdom, north. South would be Israel. Yeah, India would be south. East would be Israel, Pakistan. Then the far east would be China and North Korea. And south, you can say south is India. You can say south and so forth. All right, it would be India and so forth. That would be south. All right? So now, give me the book of Joel 2. Because I left off part one with the northern army. If you watched um, the war... To end all wars, part one, I go on to the Northern Army and how we would be under, in danger on this side of the world. And the Lord is going to bring about an occurrence that would remove the army from us. So give me Joel 2, verse 12. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. He's going to explain why. you got to fast and pray. Watch this. And rend your heart. And not your garments. I mean, for, I mean, change your mind, not rip your clothes because you're sad. You're saying, rend your mind too. Go ahead. And turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repent of him of the evil. Go ahead. Who knoweth if he will return and repent? He will. Go ahead. And leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. I mean, bring forth the warning. Prophesy. Go ahead. Sanctify fast. Call a solemn assembly. Meaning coming together. Watch this. Verse 16. Gather the people. That goes back to gathering, establishing schools, sanctuaries for this time of evil to come. Go ahead. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breast. Babies, infants, newborns. Go ahead. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Go ahead. Let Young people. Go ahead. Let the priests. The ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Send up prayers. Go ahead. And let them say, spare thy people. Why? Because the most high is going to have it where on this side of the world we're going to undergo heavy afflictions that Christ spoke about throughout Matthew 24, the time of sorrows. We're going to undergo heavy affliction as we always have from Rome to Spain, to Greece, to Spain, and it will happen again. And so we always do classes about preparation for food shortages, preparation for different things. Go ahead, it's going to get rough out here. Go ahead. Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy inher their heritage to reproach, that the heathen shall rule over them. Wherefore shall, should they say among the people, where is their God? Right, prove, the nations that we do, prove to the nations that we have a God, rather than mock us and say, where is your God now, when they come against us? Read on, verse 18, watch this. Verse 18. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land. He'll be what? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land. That's the part you want to focus on. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land. Because there's people living in his land that do not belong there. They'll be jealous, he'll be jealous for his land. Read on. And pity his people. And will pity his people which belong in that land he'll be jealous over. So he's going to cause some problems to stir revolving around what? That land. Watch this. Read on. It's going to say it. Yay. Yay. The Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith. Being what, in the midst of this affliction, I'm going to bless you. Take care of you. Look after you. Go ahead. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Because our deliverance will be, will be taking place in, that midst, in the midst of that. It's going to take place. It's going to start. Go ahead. But I will remove far off from you. But I will remove far from off of you. Go ahead. The northern army. The northern army. Where? In, in this side of the world. The northern army. Go ahead. And will drive him into a land barren and desolate. And I will drive him into a land barren, barren and desolate. Why? Because there's going to be war in that land. That what? He's jealous over. Why? It's going to say where? Go ahead. 
with his face toward the east sea. His face toward the east sea, his face, the army, he's going to leave the north, leave us alone, and it's going to be, his, his attention shall be drawn toward the, um, the east. So it's, so it's just towards what? Toward the East Sea. The East Sea, write this down. The East Sea is the Dead Sea, which is the land of Israel. The land he'll be jealous over. He's going to bring conflict over there and take their attention off of us on this side and bring it to the east. That's what it's going into. That's why I was saying earlier, spread our people, because our people are going to be hurt, killed, and imprisoned during that time the army's on this side. But the Lord's going to bring about a blessing to take them away from us and focus on the conflict in the east, the Near East, which we call the Middle East today. Read on. Read the verse again. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. That's what the Lord said earlier, gather together. Because in that time, we're going to need each other more than ever. In that time. When our army's established over here. But when he starts to afflict us, and we pray to the Lord and come together, then he's going to bring about uh, interruption and have them go and focus their sights on the east. The east sea is the dead sea. That's Israel there. Go ahead. And I would drive him into a land barren and desolate. With his face toward the east sea. Go ahead. And his hindered part toward the utmost sea. And his back part will be towards the utmost sea, means the Mediterranean Sea. Which is with Israel's borders. The Mediterranean Sea. So his body will be in the Mediterranean. He'll be focusing on the east. Conflict over there. That's why I said the land will be desolate and barren. Why? We'll find out soon enough. You want to say something, Malachi? Yeah. Go ahead. You know what's so heavy? What we just read right there? It says that the Lord will remove far from us the northern army. You know what that proved? That proved where most of Israel going to be at. And that proved where the affliction is going to be really going on real bad. It's going to be right here in America. You understand? It's going to be right here in Babylon. This is where what people are going to be going through much affliction. Okay? It's going to happen across the world, but not on the level it's going to take, be taking place here in America. It's going to be so bad, God said, you know what, I'm going to remove that northern army from you. You know, I'm going to cause something to happen in, in Israel, in the land of Israel with those fake Jews over there. And I'm going to remove that northern army that's afflicting you here in the land of the north, in America. Okay? So you brothers we keep, and sisters, we keep telling you, prepare for what's coming. Okay, build your spirit up, build your faith up. Okay, because in this time, when we read Second Ezra's, um, when when we read Second Ezra's um, fifteen and sixteen and seventy, he says, um, "Then shall you go? Then shall you know who is my chosen?" Okay, because guess what? At that time, the chosen is going to stand up and endure. Okay, so this is where the affliction going to take place here in the land of the north. Yeah, give me the um, map um, I want of, I want number eight. Yeah, number eight. Yeah. To show you the uh, east sea and utmost sea. Put that up there, blood up. That's the one I want blood up. See if I can get an idea where the army's going to be um, sent to. So right there, Mediterranean Sea, that will be the utmost sea. And you see Israel right there, West Bank, Gaza Strip, that's the Dead Sea there. All right? So that's the, so the army's going to be brought over there. Okay, there'll be a conflict over there that will cause the land to be barren and desolate. Not all of it, but part, a portion of it. We're going to get to that in a minute. All right? Uh, what else I want? Mm. Give me the... Um, I said that's number eight. Right? I said eight already. Yeah, I said eight. Uh, that's all I want. Now, go. Just give me um, Zephaniah two and one. D. You want me to read the verse? Uh, finish verse twenty. Yes. Go ahead. All right. Verse twenty it says, "But I will Ezekiel Joel. I'm sorry, Joel chapter two, verse twenty. Mm -hmm. But I will remove far off from you the northern army, mm -hmm. and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east sea." And his hinder part toward the utmost sea. referring to Israel. That's what it's referring to. Go ahead. And his stink shall come up. Because they're going to go to battle and get killed over there. There's going to be a conflict over there. They're going to be destroyed. Go ahead. And his ill savior shall, and his Ill savior shall come up because he have done great things. Terrible things. To who? To us over here. 
They're going to pay for their evils towards us here over there. That's what it's going into. That's why I read earlier in verse 17, spare thy people. Now give me Zephaniah 2 and 1. Read to verse 3. Now, draw two does have twofold meaning in it, but it's going into this, in this instance right here, it's referring to um, this side. Because there'll be Bishop Kanai did a class referencing Joel 2 as well regarding the Lord showing up and things like that nature, parallel and revelation. So it's the same thing, it's twofold. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation, not desire, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. That's going into the, the affliction. The northern army is the same thing. Go ahead. Next verse. Verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. How you do that? By being what? Coming together. Under the same mind, same body. That's what it's referring to. Coming together. Gathering together. Go ahead. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. What's the Lord's anger when he sends the nations against us? That's the Lord's anger. And also, eventual, the destruction of this place. That anger as well. All right? So now we're going to read verse 4 later on. Keep that in mind. Verse 1 and 3. That's why I, start, that's why I went there. Now give me um, the northern army. Give me Ezekiel 35 now. So they're gonna, it's going to be a conflict because the Lord is what? Jealous over the land. So he's going to bring about, why is he jealous, the, why is he jealous for? Because there's nations that live there that should not be there. That claim it's their land that God gave to them in 1948. Ezekiel 35, verse 2. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 35, verse 2. Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir. Against who? Mount Seir. Against Mount Seir being Edom. Go ahead. And prophesy against it. And prophesy against it. Go ahead. Jump, the verse, jump down to verse, uh, verse 5. Verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. And has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity. In the time Babylon came against us, Edom joined forces with them and began to what? Kill us, enslave us, and took parts of our land during that time. They couldn't resist. Oh, these guys are in, 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 um, in exile? Take some of the land. Go ahead. In the time that their iniquity had an end. They, can, they furthered it. Read on. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God. I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. You can't escape. That curse that, curse that falls behind them chariots, that's the same thing. They're prepared for slaughter, no matter what they do or what they say. Go ahead. Sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue Since thee. Since you don't hate killing, you're going to be killed. Live by the sword, die by the sword. Jump to verse 9. Verse 9. I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy city shall not return. And you shall know that I am the Lord. There'll be no more Washington. There'll be no more New York. There'll be no more Detroit. No more Cali. No more, none of that. No more France. No more Italy. It's over. Your cities will be destroyed along with you. Go ahead. Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine. Because what, what did they say? Because thou hast said, these two nations. That southern, northern kingdom. This side of the world, they took us as Christians and took our land. As, the, as ours, this belongs to manifest destiny. It belongs to us. Go ahead. And Read it from the top. Because thou hast said these two nations and these two countries. These two countries. Manifest destiny is one. And the other one is what? The Balfour Declaration? Balfour Declaration is the other one. These two countries will be ours. Manifest destiny, Balfour Declaration. Go ahead. That ain't Berlin Conference, right? That's referring to Africa. Don't mess me. Don't mess me, don't mess me up, man. Bible, Bible Declaration, correct? Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll make sure I'm right. Go ahead. Don't say I'm stupid. I'm gonna tell. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine. Go ahead. And we will possess it. And we will possess it as in the country, the lands. This side of the world and the other side of the world. Go ahead. Whereas the Lord was there. Because God's people was there. Go ahead. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God. I will even do according to thy anger. I'm, God said, I'm going to do according to your anger. You don't you imagine how Esau's anger on this side of the world, he, he 
kidnapped, um, mutilated us um, in Israel, mutilated them during the time of Rome, killed us on this side of the world. Native Americans, North's entire empires erased from existence. Inca, Aztec, Mayan, North American Indians, destroyed. Guys, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to do it to you according to your anger. Go ahead. And according to thy envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. Why is it envy? Because God did not choose them, even though they're the older brother. They felt that hatred that Esau had for Jacob back then, it passed through his lineage. Remember they said, when Isaac dies, I'm going to kill Jacob. That was the hatred passed them through lineage. It, that hatred was passed down through his, through his loins. That envy and hatred. Oh, God. Yeah, like a lot of time, brothers and sisters ask themselves, why doesn't white people love us? Why we can't get along with white people? No matter where to history we go, white people keep afflicting us and enslaving us. Why? Because there is a natural hatred that they got towards us, man. A natural hatred and envy they got towards us. Mm -hmm. Okay? So much so that even during the war in Ukraine, they treat us like garbage. <laughs> Russia's attacking Ukraine. Ukraine saying, nigga, get him back in the line. Even in the midst of war with their own people, they still mad at us. You can't make this up, man. COVID damn it. Well, that's somebody else. But you, you get my point. You get my point. Go ahead. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. Yeah, so read it again. You confused me. Read it again. 11 again. Verse 11. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thy anger and according to, to thy envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. Against us. Go ahead. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. Right. Which he's doing now. Read on. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord and that I have heard all thy blasphemies, which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel. What blasphemies? With the Jews. We're the Christians, and you're the Gentiles. You're the Hamites. You're the curse of Ham. That's what they say. That's the blasphemies. We don't Saying, they are laid desolate. They are given us to consume. Thus, with your mouth, you have boasted against me, and I multiply your words against me. Against God. Go ahead. I have heard them. God said, I heard you. I got something for you. That's all I want. Now, give me the next chapter, 36 and verse 1 and 2. Let me read the verse 5. Let's read the verse 5. 36, book, verse 1. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 1. Also, thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God against the enemy, have said against you, aha, even the ancient high places are, are ours in possession. So the heathens say, aha, even the ancient high places are in our possession. We have Iraq, we have Iran, we have Syria, we have Israel, we have America. This place is belong to me. At the Palestinians. That land is part of that land is ours too. Part of that land is ours too. Part of that land is also ours. They say, aha, the ancient places are ours. Go ahead. Verse 3. Therefore, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, because thou have made you desolate and swallow you up on every side that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen. And ye are taken up in the lips of talkers. We are taken up, we are taken up in the lips of talkers. Go ahead. And are an infamy of the people. And we are the most infamous people no matter where we go. Niggas, coons, criminals, hood, um, thugs, gangsters. We are the most infamous among nations. We sit down somewhere, they'll get a move. We, are, we, live in, we as a nation live in infamy among these nations. Even the Ukraine. Infamy. China, infamy. America, infamy. South Africa, infamy. Ethiopia, infamy. Iraq, Iran, infamy. Mauritania, infamy. Go ahead. Verse 4. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Go ahead, verse 5. There, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen. Against the residue of the heathen going into the nations, especially Palestinians. Go ahead. And against all Idumia. And against all Idumia, all Edom, whatever they call themselves today, 
Russian, German, Greek, Spanish, Polish, Danish, Dutch. All of them are Idumia or Edomites. All of them. Go ahead. Which have appointed my land and took their possession. So this particular Idumian, he's referring to those who took it, taken his land into their possession. Amalek. Israelis. He's referring to, he's talking to you. Go ahead, read that part again. Against all Idumia, what? Against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession. Go ahead. With the joy of all their heart. From, from being, from, by stealing it. Go ahead. With the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Yeah, tourist attraction. Come, come, visit Israel. Come, come. Come to see the welling wall that Herod built. I mean David built. Damn liars, man. Cast it out for a prey. That's all I want. So we're done with those, the Idumians that took our land. Remember we read earlier in Joel, the Lord will be jealous for the land and bring about conflict over that land. And that conflict over that land will initiate the war, the third woe. Give me Isaiah 34 and verse 8. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34, verse 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. For the what? For the controversy of Zion. For the controversy of Zion. The controversy of Zion, the people, as well as the land. Give me Jeremiah 25, verse 31. Hey, that's so heavy, G. Mm -hmm. That's so heavy right there. It says the controversy mm -hmm. of Zion. That's so heavy. When you look around the in in the around the world right now, that's the controversy. Mm -hmm. You go over there in the land of Israel, there is conflict, there is fighting, there is a big controversy who that long land belongs to. Mm -hmm. Do it belong to the Palestinians or do it belong to the people that um, the United Nations put in that land and say it belongs to them? Who does that land belongs to? Okay. Mm -hmm. The book of Jeremiah, chapter twenty-five, verse thirty-one. 31. Mm -hmm. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth. For the Lord have a controversy with the nations. The Lord have a controversy with what? For the Lord have a controversy with the nations. The Lord has a controversy with the nations. He has beef with the nations. Go ahead. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. He's going to bring them to destruction, these nations. And it will revolve around the controversy of that land. Give me Zechariah 12 and 3. Zechariah 12 and 3. The book of Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 3. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burdensome themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Read it again. And in that day, in, and in that day, will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all for all people? He will make that land a burdensome stone for all people. Go ahead. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. All that claim the land to be theirs, they shall be cut in pieces. That's you Israelis and you Palestinians. You're gonna be cut in in America also, because America funded the Israel um, Israelis to, to maintain that land as their own. America will also be cut in pieces. All right, read again. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. Russia as well, because Russia help, helps Iran, who helps who help, um, Russia helps Iran also, who's in the league with, the, um, with Palestine. So all nations who are involved or in some way connected to, connected to um, that land's um, inhabitants, they will be judged as well. All right? Palestinians, Israelis, America, all of them. Syrians, they're going to face it. They're going to face judgment. All right? Where are we at? Verse 3. Give me Isaiah 14 now. So oftentimes we read Isaiah 14 in reference to the, the fall of Babylon. Not ancient Babylon, but the fall of modern Babylon. We got, got something new. Normally we stop around what seven? We stop around like uh. Twenty-two. Yeah, twenty-two. We stop at twenty-two usually. Mm -hmm. 
22, yeah. Yes, sir. We're going to start from 24 tonight. Verse 24. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 24. Mm -hmm. The Lord of hosts have sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. What happens? What happens because I say what will happen. Go ahead, verse 25. Watch this. That I will break the Assyrian in my land. I will break the what? That I will break the Assyrian in my land. He will break. So this is twofold. But it's referring to modern day Assyrians. He's referring to. I will break. Read again. That I will break the Assyrian in my land. I will break the Assyrian in my land. He will break the Assyrian in my land. Go ahead. And upon my mountains, tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them. And his burden depart from off their shoulders. So who's the Assyrian in his land? And who is it them that his burden shall be departed off their shoulders? Who's that referring to? Is it referring to the ancient Assyrians back then? Let's find out. Give me a book of Micah 5. We're going to start from verse 1. Now normally we read Micah. We read Micah 5 verse 1 to 2. And we stop there because that's the prophecy of the Messiah. His tribe and so forth for him being our king. But we don't really read it further down. Micah 5, verse 1. The book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 1. Now, gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He have laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. It's referring to Rome. Go ahead. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel. Right, out of Judah shall come forth the king. Of Israel, the ruler, Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Who's going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. It's referring to the Lord. Verse 3, watch this. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth have brought forth. I mean, he'll put us in captivity. That's what he's referring to. Go ahead. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. Meaning Israel's going to come back together, reunite again. The 12 tribes will come together again. Repent, acknowledge that Israel and come back together. That's happening now. Go ahead. Verse 4. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord. He is referring to the one reference in verse, verse 2, the Messiah. Read verse um, 4 again. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. Referring to Christ. Go ahead. And they shall abide. Israel shall abide. Go ahead. For now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. For now shall he, meaning Christ, be great unto the ends of the earth. That same ruler back in verse 2. Watch this. He shall be great unto the ends of the earth. Watch this. And this man shall be the peace. So you know it's Christ. This man that come out of Judah shall be the peace. Between who? Southern and northern kingdom. Restoring the 12 tribes back together again. He'll be that peace when he comes to the earth and leaves the earth. But why? Read verse 5 from the top again. And this man shall be the peace. This man shall be the peace. Go ahead. When the Assyrian shall come into our land. Stop. Now, when Christ walked the earth, was the Assyrians in the land? No, they were not. So who's the Assyrian here? Because they referring to the Assyrian when Christ was walking the earth. They weren't around. They were conquered and overthrown by the Babylonians hundreds of years before. So who's the Assyrian in this context here? Read on. And when he shall tread in our palaces, then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men. Meaning to do what? To prophesy against him living in our land. So who is this Assyrian in this context treading in the land? When Christ was walking the earth, who could that be? Read the next verse. Verse 6. And they shall waste the, the land of Assyria. They shall waste the land of Assyria. Go ahead. We're going to find what that is. Go ahead. With the sword. And the land of Nimrod. And the entrances thereof. And the land of who? And the land of Nimrod. And the entrances thereof. And the land of Nimrod. Which is what? What was Nimrod's land called? Babylon. 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 Read on. Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian. Deliver us from who? The Assyrian. He shall deliver us from who? The Assyrian. From the Assyrian. Who's the Assyrian? Or the land of Babylon. Who's that? Go ahead. When he cometh into our land, and when he treadeth within our borders. So what nation treaded into our borders and was in our land? What nation is that? We read it earlier. It's Edom. That's who it is. That's who the Assyrian is. Because when the Assyrians in ancient time. What did they do when they took over? They took possession of what? Of Israel and the land. The same thing Edom has done. 
Well, give me something. It says, it says, the land of Assyria, the land of Nimrod, took the land. Give me Psalms 137. Verse 7 to 8. He took it over as Rome first, and then he took it over again during that, during that um, Babel declaration. The book of Psalms, chapter 137, verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Of who? Of Edom. Edom, go ahead. In the day of Jerusalem, who said, race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. Go ahead. O daughter of Babylon. What's the children of Edom called? O daughter of Babylon. Or Assyrian. It's the same landmass. Land of Assyria, land of Nimrod. It's the same people. Go ahead. Who art to be destroyed? Happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Go ahead. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Oh, happy day. Smash the kids against the stones. So Edom is the daughter of Babylon or the Assyrians. They represent that because the, what, did, what did the Assyrians do? What are the Assyrians known for doing? Taking Israel out their land and putting nations there, what? In their place. That's what the Assyrians' policy was. Put them, in, put them in foreign lands and put heathens that don't belong there in the land. That's the Babylonian attribute. That's what Edom has done today. Put us somewhere else and put themselves there. So God refers to them as the Assyrians in the context of Micah and Isaiah 14, who have taken possession of the land Going back to Ezekiel 36 and 35. Yeah, Malachi. Yeah, and also, um, in, in the time of Isaiah, the Assyrians and them, they had conquered part of the land. They had took part Northern of the... Kingdom. Yeah, they took part of the land of Israel, the northern kingdom part of Israel. They, the Assyrians had took it over, and they were in that land. They were strangers in that land. So even in the time of Isaiah 14, when Isaiah referred to them as Assyrians... He's talking about strangers that's living in the land of Israel. Right. Okay, when he mentioned the Assyrians, it's talking about strangers or other nations that living in that land that do not belong there. Okay, that's what he's talking about. Big? Yep. Yeah, man. You know what? Go to um go to Luke 21 and I think verse 24 and read that for me. Luke 21 and 24. Read that for me. Yes, sir. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. So the Israelites, we fell by the edge of the sword. Read on. And shall be led away captive into all nations. And we was led away as slaves into all nations. Read on. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. By the Assyrians. That's another term for them Gentiles or Assyrians. Read on. Until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Have the time of the Gentiles been fulfilled? No. The time of the Gentiles is fulfilled when Christ returned and established the rightful, established God kingdom on earth. And put the true Israelites back in that line. That's when the time of the Gentiles is going to be fulfilled. So if the time of the Gentiles is not fulfilled, who is the people in that land right there? Who are the people that's living? They are Gentiles. Okay? They are strangers. That's why Isaiah called them Assyrians. Mm -hmm. Okay? Dick? Give me a second. It's just um, 15, 20. So the land of Assyria is in reference to Israel, based upon the strangers living there in the land. They don't belong there. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 15, verse 20. So keep that in mind now. Hold on a second. Let me get there with you. 2nd Ezra 15 and verse, let's say, verse 20. 20. Yep, read that. Behold, saith God, I will call together all the kings of the earth. To reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun. Rising of the sun. Give me that article number two. The rising of the sun. What's that in reference to? The rising of the sun. <coughs> oh, okay. 
What does that say now? What is it? What, what is uh? Read that part there. Why is Japan called the land of the rising sun? Look, go to the, click that map over there to the right. Where Japan is at? Blow it up some so we can see it. I want that whole. I want just move it over. So I, I want China. I want all that region there. Move it over. Yep. Blow that up some if you can. So you can get all four of those. You ready? Everybody? Yep. Move it over. Bring it, bring it up some. Bring it up. So there we go. That's perfect. Japan, so the rising of the sun is referring to the far east. The rising of the sun is referring is in reference to the far east. All right? So now, remember earlier I showed y'all the countries that have nuclear, nuclear capabilities. Which one was it? It was North Korea. They have nukes there, which is right above South Korea, which is next door to Japan. All right? So, one second. Yeah, Kore and Koreans would be, that's Ammon, by the way. It's Koreans, it's Ammon. It's the same people. Koreans, Japan, Japanese, it's the same. Well, them, them, they argue, it's confusion, it's confusion with them. All the same. So, that the rising of the sun is in reference to China, North Korea, South Korea, Japan. Japan is the land of the rising sun because it's the far east in which the sun rises. Go back to Ezra's again. The book of 2 Edges, chapter 15, verse 20. Behold, saith God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun. Far east. From the south. South, go ahead. From the east. That's the so-called middle or near east. That's your India, your Israel, your Syria, Iraq, Iran. That's that area. Go ahead. And Libanus. Lebanon, go ahead. To turn themselves one against another. What's he going to do? To turn themselves one against another. To turn them one against another. Turn them one against another. Go ahead. And repay the things that they have done to them. Done to who's the them? The them is us. We are the them. Because all those nations that I mentioned that's listed here are from all parts of the world. They all had a hand in slaving, enslaving our people. In the enslavement of our people. Read on. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen. Like as they do yet this day. Perfect example. When the, vid, when, when the virus dropped, you had our people living in the area known as, um, it was called, uh, hold on, let me make this on top of my head. It was called, one second, oh man. It's the area in China. You start with a G, right? Yep. Ga Gan Guangzhou. Guangzhou. Gu in the Guangzhou province. You had our brothers who are um, from um, this side of the world, African Americans and West Africans, living in the Guangzhou province of China. And they were evicting us from our homes, saying that we caused the COVID over there. When it started in their labs that America put over there, they tried to say it was us. And began to evict us and have us living in the street in the Guangzhou province. The same province where they had slaves. So they allow us to live in the same area, allow us to live in the same area where they were selling Kunlun slaves over there in Guangzhou. Kunlun's over there, or um, um, they call them devils. Black devils, they called us, or Kunlun's in that area. So it's the same place where we are allowed to live in that province is where they were selling us as slaves hundreds of thousands of years ago that they keep secret. The Ming, the Tang, and the Song Dynasty, all three of them. Treating us like garbage. So these nations have a lot to pay for. A lot. That's why I said earlier. I said earlier, we are the infamy of the people. No matter where we go, we are treated like garbage. I saw a video. I think it was on um, Patient Saints, where they was talking to a brother and sister, a, a father and daughter, on a radio show, and the, they were saying over there they're passive aggressive over there. Meaning, rather than call you a nigger, they won't call you a nigger to your face. What they do is when you sit down next to them, they'll get up and go somewhere else. That's what they do. Because they don't like us. We are infamous among the nations. Read it again. Where you at? That was verse 20. Verse 21. Read verse 21. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also, and recompense in their bosom. Thus saith the Lord God. Continue. My right hand shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. The fire is going forth from his wrath. Judgment, go ahead. And have consumed the foundations of the earth. 
And the sinners, like the straw that is kindled. Israel going to be killed too. Wicked Israel. Go ahead. Verse 24. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. I would not spare them. Go your way, ye children, from the power. Defile not my sanctuary. Go on. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him. And therefore delivered he them from unto death and destruction. Go on. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye shall remain in them. For God shall not deliver you. Because ye have sinned against him. Behold, a horrible vision, and the appearance thereof from the east. Appearance thereof from where? From the east. From the east. The appearance thereof from the east. This horrible vision. Watch this. Verse 29. Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth, that all they which hear it, which hear them may fear and tremble. So these nations, dragons of Arabia, are going to be the Arab nations is under, under an Islamic regime that come together to do what? Read on. It's going to say. Also the Carmanians. The Carmanians is in reference to Iranians. Or their ancient name would be Pers um, Persians. Car or Medes. Carmanians. Carmanians. Go ahead. Raging and wrath shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. So these guys are going to join together because why? But one based upon religious similarities. Because remember the um the Iranians and the Arabs are Muslims, and they both have beef with America and Israel. Israel is America Junior, basically. Israel is the America of the East. That's all it is. They refer to Israel as. Little Satan, they refer to America as Big Satan or Big Shatan. Big Shatan, Little Shatan. That's what they call America and Israel over there. The Arabs call it that. And remember, Trump, when Trump was in office, who did he kill before he left out of office? Soleimani. They still mad about that. That, had, that thought, that, we, before COVID dropped, that happened first. We, I didn't forget that. We didn't forget that. They want Trump's head on a plate. Read again. Well, okay, go ahead. Yeah, well, you could send the article. Yo, check it. Um, even this week, this week you had, you, you had um Saudi Arabia. You know, you know what's going on with the oil prices and so forth. You got Joe Biden reaching out to Saudi Arabia. He said, "Listen, I ain't even talking to you, man." He said, "Don't even call me." You know, <laughs> you got Joe Biden trying to negotiate oil deals and so forth. You know, the, so the, Arab, the Arabs and them over there like, yo, don't even call me. Don't talk to me. You know, so when I tell you all things is escalating, things is getting real, you know, you brothers and sisters pay attention. Okay, what we're reading, what, what Deacon bringing out right here, this is Bible prophecy. Okay, this is going to come to pass. Okay? The article or something? Yeah, you had an article there. So, let me see. what's happening right now is you have the Arabs here. And you have the Iranians joining together. Read on. Verse 30 again. Yes, sir. Why he gets that? Also, the Carmanians, raging in wrath, shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. And with great power shall they come and join battle with them. So the Iranians and, their and, the, and, the, and the Arabs shall join forces. Yes, sir. Shall come together. Go ahead. And shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. Now, what land is that? And shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. We expressed this year earlier when Assyria took over certain land. What land was that? You got the article? Yes, sir. Let's, let's see it. Hold that thought. Iraq to host another round of Iran Saudi Arabia talks. Damn, there you go. We go, 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 go up again, go up. What date is that? March 12th, 2022. You can't make this up. You can't make it up. The Carmanians and the Dragons of Arabia are coming together having conversation. Iraq is the hosted. Another round of what? Of what? Of Iran? I'm so, Iraq, Saudi Arabia talks. I'm sorry. I got it, Jess. I'm sorry. Iraq to host another round of Iran Saudi Arabia talks. Bible. Prophecy. You don't understand. Tell you don't understand. Go down. We'll read some. Go ahead. Read that. Uh, the Iranian flag waves in front of the International Atomic Energy Agency. Wow. In front of where? 
in front of the International Atomic Energy Agency. Oh, that's nice. Headquarters. Go ahead. That's I, pretty. I, that's pretty. I like that. That's cute. The Go IAEA ahead. headquarters. Before the beginning of a Board of Governors meeting in Vienna, Austria, March 1st, 2021. Erbil, Iraq, March 12th. Iraq will host another round of talks. Between another round of talks. They've been talking. Another round of talks. Go ahead. Between regional foes, Iran and Saudi Arabia. On Wednesday, the foreign ministry in Baghdad said on Saturday without giving further details. So they were enemies, but now they're not. God is like, nah, you guys don't get along. Damn. I got you guys because my enemy of my enemy is my friend. Go ahead. Iraqi foreign minister Fuad Hussein revealed the development during remarks at a diplomatic forum in uh, Atalia on Turkey's southern coast cited by local media. A foreign ministry spokesman confirmed the comments to Reuters. The talks will be the, the fourth round. Host- Damn, fourth round of talks. Go ahead. Hosted by Baghdad between officials from his two neighbors and mutual adversaries, according to local media. Woo, saw one. Damn. Hey, I got another video. Hey, can you read that again? In Second Ezra 15, the um, the Arabs and the Carmanians. Yes, verse sir. 30. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 30. Also, the Carmanians, raging the ca- in wrath, shall the go. Carmanians, the Carmanians is the Iranians today. Mm-hmm. Okay, it says they're going to be what? Raging in wrath. They're going to be raging in wrath. So the question is, why are the Carmanians, the Iranians, why are they raging? Why are they uh, angry? What's making them angry? Why are they raging with rats? Read on. Shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. Read on. And with great power shall they come and join battle with them and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. So they're going to join together with the Arabs. Okay? That's Bible prophecy. The Carmanians, the Iranians, they're going to come together to fight. A, they're going to come together with the Arabs. Okay, so play that video for me. This is this week. This is like two days ago. I'm, I'm going to show you all why they're angry and why they are raging. Play that video for me. Newscast top Israeli strategic analyst Elliot Chodoff is back to break down why Iran is vowing revenge against Israel, why the Persian Gulf nations are snubbing the this Biden two administration, days ago. and why Russia's invasion of Ukraine is not going according to plan. That's next. Keep going forward. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. We're going to get right into it today with our good friend, Israel Defense Forces Reserve Major Elliot Chodoff. He is back with us, top strategic security and military analyst, to break down Iran's latest threats against Israel over Syria. This is a big one that you are not hearing about in the mainstream media. Plus, why has Russia's invasion of Ukraine stalled and What about that Israel-Putin relationship that we see playing out in real time right now? And why are Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates snubbing the Biden administration? And what does it have to do with Iran? Take a look. Elliot Chodoff, great to have you with us as always. We've got a lot to discuss, including a Russia-Ukraine update. But I want to start with a very important story. The Iranian regime is threatening revenge against Israel over the death of two Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps members this week near Damascus. Can you give us an update on that? We were taking out, as we have been, our primary targets in in Syria are attempts to upgrade Hezbollah primarily qualitatively, not just quantitatively. And these guys were the heads of the project to upgrade Hezbollah's missiles precision. So take that down. So basically... Is it the Israeli government is targeting leaders in Iran and assassinating them along with America? They they assassinated the the top general over there in Iran and Iran vow vengeance. What you all don't know is that they they sent two agents over here to assassinate two senators. It's not all over the news, but you know a lot of you all know that's that's what's taking place right now. Okay, they caught two Irani secret agents that came over here to kill them two senators that, that um, served under, um, under, under Trump, okay? 
So this is why the Carmanians and them is angry. They are angry because the, the, the fake Jews, the Israelis, they are assassinating their leaders and so forth. Okay? That's what's going on. You all saw they use um they use that technology and assassinated the top scientists in Iran. They use a, a um a remote control car and assassinate the dude. Okay, so these are the things that's going on why the Carmanian is raging, why they are angry. Okay? Dick. Give me a, um real quick the mic uh I'm just something out. Give me the mic of five real quick commentary. Regarding, um, I mentioned the land of Assyria, and it mentioned um, land of Nimrod. Read it earlier. We're gonna read. Um, let me see it. Like a five and five and six. Go down. We see something. When the Assyrians shall come into our land. Read that right there. There's a commentary. We're going to read that in the Benson commentary. Let's start from when the Assyrians shall enter into our land. When the Assyrians shall come into our land, this may refer to the imminent apprehension of the invasion of Sennacherib. But the actual event does not correspond to it. So the actual event, this actual event does not correspond to the Assyrians attacking Israel. It's prophecy. It's not referring to ancient Assyria. It's, meant, it's using those names, it's using those um, particular nation, but it's not referring to that time. Go ahead. It may look forward to the time when the enemies of Israel attacked the Jews in the Maccabean period. And the shepherds, seven or eight. No. Go ahead. An indefinite number. Being an indirect number is a certain number. Go ahead. Successfully resisted the attacks upon the flock. The intention of the passage may be spiritually interpreted. Ah, the intention of the passage may be spiritually interpreted. Go ahead. As pointing to the eight principal, strictly anointed men. Who as Christian pastors receive their commission from the Messiah. Meaning the Lord's going to raise us up to pray and prophesy against the eight principal men in Micah 5. Those who are going to set up prayers like we read in the Joel 2 about praying, coming together. That's just alluding to. Give um, Micah 5, shall be, shall be the peace. Read that. I think that's what I want. Benson commentary. Read that. All right, Benson commentary. Micah 5 verse 5. This man shall be the peace. Christ is our peace as a priest. Right. Making atonement for sin. And reconciling us to God. He is our peace as a king. Conquering our enemies. Protecting us against their attacks. And preserving our minds in peace and tranquility. Go ahead. In this latter sense, the expression seems to be taken here. Right. As, Go ahead. As if he had said, the Messiah in all ages, whether before or after his incarnation, secures the peace and welfare of his church and people. Against all the attempts of his and their enemies. When the Assyrian. Go ahead. When the Assyrian. After a lustrous prophecy relating to the Messiah, in the foregoing verses, the prophet passes on to the subversion of the Assyrian Empire and under the type that ancient enemy of God's people foretells the overthrow of all their enemies. That's what it's talking about. So it says after the illustrious prophecy relating to the Messiah, in the foregoing verses, the prophet passes on to the subversion of the Assyrian Empire, meaning he's using the Assyrian Empire as a future prophecy. It's not that time. Under the type of ancient enemies of Israel. Go ahead, people. Go ahead. Especially of the anti-Christian powers, which should attack his church in the latter which days. Which should attack his people in the latter days, which would be America. So the, even the common commentators know that Micah 5 is a, is a future prophecy regarding Assyria. It's not ancient Assyria. It's another Assyria. It's prophetic. That's what he said. So I read this here. So I want me see... Go down, we see. Yeah, we don't, we don't. We don't. Just gonna say it. Shall shall come into our land, as Sennacherib did with an overwhelming army within a few years after this prophecy was delivered, when by the power and authority of the Messiah, the Son of God, in his pre-existent state, see Micah chapter five verse two, the Syrian army was defeated and Judea's peace secured. Go ahead. When he shall tread in our palaces. Which Sennacherib did in all the cities of Judah, except Jerusalem, against which he could not prevail, because Emmanuel was with Hezekiah in that city, as foretold in Isaiah 8, uh, chapter 8, verses 8 to go 10. Name, go to Namely. Uh, namely, Hezekiah. No, I'm sorry. Then shall we raise against them. Namely, Hezekiah. And with him the prophets and people, 
By prayer shall prevail with God to send deliverance. Right. That's the eight principal men who mentions in Micah 5. They're going to pray and prophesy. They're going to pray the way Hezekiah prayed against the Assyrians and his, and his men under him. We're going to pray and prophesy against Edom when they come against us. Go ahead. This seems primarily to refer to the deliverance of Hezekiah. And this, we read again? This seems primarily to refer to the deliverance of Hezekiah and his kingdom from the Assyrian army who invaded them. Go ahead. Seven shepherds and eight principal men, or seven rulers and eight princes of men. As arch, archbishops, Archbishop Newcomb renders it, who thinks the prophet means... Oh, that's all I saw one. That's it? That's all I want. So it's, it's, it's prophetic. Now give me... um. Well, uh, John, give me modern, give me a modern day Assyria map, number eight, number six, number six. Mark these off as I go along. Which one do I want? Ah, uh, the, the green one on the bottom. The bottom with the green, go over. Write that one. I want that one first. Throw it up some if you can. Now remember, I want you to read Ezra again. Read Ezra, and I want you to read verse 30 again. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 15, verse 30. Also the Carmanians, raging in wrath, shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. Uh -huh. And with great power shall they come. And join battle with them. With the, uh, with the Arabs, go ahead. And shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. They shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. What land did the Assyrians conquer? Do you remember? What land did the Assyrians conquer? Someone said Babylon. You know. What land did the, Bab what land did the Assyrians um, conquer? Which one? Israel. Thank you. Israel. So in this context, they shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians Blow us up some. As far as it can go. That's fine. You see where Assyria's, um, the green, that's Assyria's rule right there. See that? Where they dominate it right there? That's the capital. Nineveh's their capital. You see how far it extends into? It extends into what? Into Israel, Palestine. And what's, what you see in the bottom there? Dead Sea. What do you see on the left hand? Mediterranean Sea. That's the northern, so there's going to be conflict there that will cause the northern army to deal with the conflict in the land of the Assyrians, which is what? Israel. Y'all follow? Land of the Assyrians is Israel in Ezra. Because the imposters are living there. Our enemies are living there, so it's their land, really. Land of the Assyrians, even though it's Israel. Y'all follow? All right. That's why the northern army is going to come. Their hindmost part will be Mediterranean, but their face will be towards what? The Dead Sea, which is what? Israel. Okay, you see Palestine right there? The circle of, circle of curse around it? You see Dead Sea behind it, right there. Dead Sea right there. Give me um, Isaiah. No. 28, rising of the sun. 30. Read 31. Verse 31 now. The book of 2nd Edges, chapter 15, verse 31. Uh-huh. Then was the land... And then shall the dragons... Sorry. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand. The dragons is going into who? The dragons of Arabia. Because they have bombs. They have nukes. They have nukes also. They're going to have nukes. They shall have the upper hand also, meaning they're going to they're they're start to win. Remember, Israel has American technology. Americans, it says, when these two join together, they will have the upper hand over Israel. Go ahead. Remembering their and remember, nation. Remember, we better, we saw early in the article how Russia and Israel are in talks. So that's the course. So once these guys attack Israel, that's going to involve who now? Who's who, who going to be involved now? Russia, Russia got to get involved. America has to get involved. So the West, the North, and the East. It's going to be involved. And since Russia and China are in league, they're going to be involved also. Read again. 31 again. Yes, sir. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand. Because they'll have assistance from the Carmanians. Go ahead. Remembering their nature. What is their nature? Give me Genesis 16. 
What's their nature that they're going to remember? The book of Genesis, chapter 16, verse 12. Let me start at verse 11. Yep. Verse 11. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. Uh-huh. And he will be a wild man. He'll be a what? A wild He'll man. He'll be a wild man. Go ahead. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. Come on. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Because you remember, Ishmael, Abraham had many sons, and all the, most of those sons resided in Arabia. Midian, Joktan, but he'll be the lead or the chief of them. He's the wild one. Midianites, Joktan, but Ishmael is the wild one, the one that goes and walks into a room and blows himself up and everybody else up in there. The Mohammedan, the Mohammedan Arabs, that's Ishmael right there. He'll be amongst his brethren. They're all going to come together along with the Iranians and fight against Israel or the land of the Assyrians. Go back and waste a portion of it. Not all of it. The waste a portion. Read it, map, read the bottom part of um of um 30 and join battle with them. Book of Second Edges, chapter 50, verse 30. And join battle with them. Right, the Carmanians and, and Arabs shall join battle. Go ahead. And shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. They shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. Go back to Joel 2 real quick. In verse 20. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 20. But I, will remove far from, but I will remove far off from you the northern army, and I will drive him into a land barren and desolate. Well, the land will be what? Barren and desolate. Because it's going to be damaged from battle. It will be barren and desolate. That's all I want. Go back to Edges again. The book of 2nd Edges, chapter 15, verse 31. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand, Remembering their nature. Wild nature. Wild boars. Go ahead. And if they shall turn themselves, conspiring together in great power to persecute them. Persecute who? The land of the Assyrians, Israelis. To persecute them. Now, give me Isaiah 14, verse 26. With the upper hand, they're going to persecute Israel. But watch this. The Something's going to happen where the tables will turn. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 26. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth. To start war or conflict in the Near East. Go ahead. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. Because all the nations are going to be involved or get involved in this, in this conflict. Go ahead. For the Lord of hosts have purposed. And who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out. And who shall turn it back? No one can stop it. Go ahead. In the year that King Ahaz died was this burden. Come on. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina. Ah, rejoice not thou, Whole Palestina. Who's Palestina? Who can guess? Don't go out. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina. Who's that? Anyone have an idea? Okay, Jalil it is. Oh, no. I'm just doing those. Yes. No, no. Mike. Shalom, leadership, brother Raphael. That's your, your Arabs. Thank you. That is your Arabs. Whole Palestina is your Palestinians. Is your Palestinians. So he's saying here, remember we read earlier how they have the upper hand. But the Lord is saying, don't rejoice just yet, Palestin Palestinians, during that conflict. Don't rejoice. Read it, read it again. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. Go to verse 25. I missed something. Go to verse 25. Verse 25. That I will break the Assyrian in my land. Who's the Assyrian in his land? Edom. He will break them. How will he break them? With the Carmanians and the dragons of Arabia. That's how he'll break them. Now we're getting clarity now. Go ahead. And upon my mountains tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them. So whose yoke will depart? Who's the them? His yoke will depart from off of. Who has an idea? Who has alluding to? I know you know, Joe. I know you know. Who has not there with your Let's stand up. Shalom leadership. Shalom. Uh, Israel. Why you say Israel? Because they have the yoke of, um, because of the bondage. They've been in bondage. Who have been in bondage? Um, the Israelites. 
No, 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 no. You had it. You said Israel. You had it. Nope. His yoke, the Assyrians shall, shall remove from off of them. You want to know one knows? Stand up. Come on, y'all. Shalom, leadership, brother Tobiah. Um, that's the Israelites during the time of King David or no, Sol no, Solomon no, when they no, had the no, yoke. No, 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 We're not in that at all. That's his prophecy. It's, it's not guarding anyone but Solomon or David. Rejoice not thou, Palestina. Brother said earlier it was the Arabs. Brother said earlier it was the Arabs. Yes. Ask him back over to the brother on the left. Let's see if he can get it. Is it Israel because they uh, are controlled over the, or mo mostly over the, all, all the East Coast over there? All those other um, nations? Israel, what Israel do you mean? Over? What Israel are you talking about? Um, the so-called Israelites. Thank you. Yes, that's exactly what it's talking about. The yoke on the Palestinians by the Israeli government. That's what it's alluding to. So when the, Karma the Karmanians and the Arabs are going to join forces to overthrow Israel because most of the power is where? Among Israel. Israelis. So when, the Karmani when they join forces with the Karmanians, they're going to remove that yoke or burden from off of them. Y'all understand? That's what it's going into. That's why they're going to join forces. They're raging. Because this, this, this fight's been going on for a long time over that land. <clears throat> Both the, these two nations have been fighting over that land for a long time. But when they join with the Ra Iranians, they're going to remove that yoke that the Israelis have on them today. Taking all the land and so forth from them. You know the land that there's either. Read again. Go back to where we at. Verse 25. Verse 25. Isaiah 14, 25. That I will break the Assyrian in my land. He will break the Assyrian or Edomite in his land. Go ahead. And upon my mountains tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them and his burden depart from off their shoulders. Because the Carmanians are going to help them remove Israel from certain parts of land. And damage, remember I said earlier, that a portion of the land of Assyria will be what? Will be destroyed. And I will force the northern army to come over and assist. Because remember, America and Israel is allies. It's the same place, basically. Jump down, jump down, no, jump down to verse 3, 29 now. Verse 29. Rejoice not thou, O Palestina. Now, why is it saying rejoice not thou, O Palestina? Why is it saying rejoice not at this point? You understand verse 25? So now you should understand verse 29 now. Why is it saying, rejoice not, O Palestina? Who's Palestina in this context? I know you know. I want somebody else. Yes. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. They're saying rejoice not because they're going to think pretty much they won because the burden has been lifted, but the war not over. You Thank know. you. Yes. All praise the Lord, all praises. Give him a round of applause. All praise the Lord. He got it. Thank you. All praises. Y'all got it? All right. The battle is not the battle is not over. It is just beginning. That's the point. So read on. Read verse um, 29 again. Rejoice not thou, O Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. The rod of him that smote thee is who? Who smote O Palestina? Who smote O Palestina? Who smote all Palestina? The Israelis. Yes, yes, the conflict, the Israelis. Go ahead. For out of the serpent's foot, so I'm sorry, for out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. So out of, out of the serpent's root shall come forth the cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. What's that going into? I need you to know. You get to stand up. You might know what it is. Look like you know. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Brother Gideon. Um, this is talking about uh, the Americans coming over. That's a missile that's, that's been uh, Thank you. Over. Yes. A missile. A missile will come and help. Oh, you got, oh, you think you won. You think you're doing something with the Iranians, huh? Oh, we got something for you. Missile shall come from the serpent's root. Okay. Yeah, Marco, you got it from here. Yeah, so, so. So this is what it's going into right here. You see, fly, uh, a flying, what do you call it? A flying serpent, flying right? Serpent, yeah. 
That's what you see. Because why? Because when the missile flying, it got the fire behind it. Flying, fiery serpent. Fiery serpent. When the missile flying, it look like a serpent. Okay, it's like, you know, it make, you know, it's, yeah. Which one? Yeah. Yep, fly, fiery serpent. That's right there. That's what they see it. That's what the prophet saw, you know. Fi f that's what the prophet saw. Yes. You know what I mean? That's what they see. That's, that's what it. they see. Fly. Read that again as, it, as that is plain. And rejoice. I'm sorry. In the first, no. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina. You Palestinians don't rejoice because you and the Carmanians got the upper hand. Read on. Because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. Because the palest because the rod of him, which is the so called um Israeli. Israeli, they smote and you have broke it's broken, meaning you got the upper hand, read on. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. A fiery flying serpent. That's what these is. Missiles. Okay, so what is it saying? That the Palestinians they're gonna have the upper hand for a little time. Okay, and they're gonna waste a, a, a small part of the land of Israel. Now, will this be? Does this one, now we can't say that this will be all in, or instantaneous. Now, nah, it it maybe a duration of time because right. war is not one day. Right. War is remember World War One and Two were for years, years. So we're not saying oh, it's gonna happen all in one day. This is the duration of time. We're gonna have the land for a while. Things are gonna pop off. It's gonna escalate. Right. Mm hmm. Okay. The, that's the, that's the um, labor pains we're reading about here. So it's not like all in one time, all in an instant. Yep. Think Instantaneous. It's going to be over a process of time. We're reading about the alliances and them coming together, the wars over there. That's what's happening. We're reading about process of time we're reading about. So don't, don't think of it in the context of, oh, back to back. It's going to be process of time. Because that's what war is. War is not one day. War is years. All right? Give me on 2nd Ezra 15 and verse 32 now. Rejoice not thou, O Palestina. Why is he saying that? The book of Ezra 15, verse 32 and 33. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 15, verse 32. Then these shall be troubled. Then the, who's the these? The these is the Carmanians and the dragons of Arabia, or Palestina. Go ahead. And keep silence through their power and shall flee. Ah, they're going to lose. Now the, the tables are going to turn. Watch this. Based upon what? That cockatrice. <laughs> Go ahead. And from the land of the Assyrians. And from the land of where? The Assyrians. Where's that at? Where's that at? Israel. Thank you. You're following. Israel, go ahead. Shall the enemy besiege them? Oh, enemy shall besiege them now. Go ahead. And consume some of them. And consume some of them. Go ahead. And in their hosts shall be fear and dread and strife among their kings. Then they're going to turn on each other. Why? Because they're already enemies. That's why they have four rounds of conversation before in that written article. So when they, when they lose, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna do? Turn on each other. <laughs> when they lose, this is going to cause more conflict. You understand? Hey, so jump, jump, um, jump back to, are you you're going back to Isaiah, Isaiah? No, not yet. Okay, okay. Go to Zechariah 9. In verse 5. Zechariah 9, we're going to be verse, mm, verse 3. The book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 3. And Tiris did build herself a stronghold, and heaped up silver as the dust, and fine gold as the mire of the streets. So Tyrus did build herself a stronghold. Now, you have, this is twofold. Tyrus is referring to a, uh, an, an island that was fortified by walls. Alexander came along. And, or, and overthrew it and set it on fire. But it's twofold. All right, I'm going to prove that. But it's, like, it's like Assyria in some context is twofold. Hold on to that. Give me Ezekiel 28 regarding this Tyrus here. Hold on to this. Give me Ezekiel 28 regarding what Tyrus this is. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thy heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, and in the midst of the seas. In the midst of the seas. Go ahead. Yet thou art a man, and not God, though thou set thy heart as the heart of God. Come on. 
Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With, with thy wisdom and with thy understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. Verse 5. By, the, by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic. By thy traffic. Go ahead. Has Trade. Thou, Go ahead. Has thou increased thy riches. And thy, and thy heart is lifted up because of thy riches. What does this sound like in Scripture? Who has an idea? Don't call out. What does this sound like? These verses, these, legs, these first three verses. Four. The first three verses sound like. Where can we find that written somewhere else? Where can we find that? Who has an idea? Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not God. Though thou set thy heart as the heart of God. Who has an idea? Try some new hands. Try some new hands. Let's see. Let's see. Man, y'all got it. Shalom. So Shalom. Is Isaac. Um, Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14 and what? I believe it's 12. Okay, let's see. Hold on. Hold on, Ezekiel. Get Isaiah 14. Very good. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 12. How art thy fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, mm. son of the morning? How art thy cut down to the ground, which did, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. Ah. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. You know I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Very good. That's, who's that referring to? In, that, in Isaiah. Who's, who's, what's, this, what's this place called in Isaiah? That was Tyrus in Ezekiel 28. What's it called in Isaiah 14? The place. Babylon. There you go. Excellent. Same place. Give me, give me some more. Who got some more? Isaiah 14. Very good. 14, 14. What else? Yes. Shalom, leadership, soldier Nathaniel. I got uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 4. Ah, let's read that. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so, is, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Excellent. Who's this referring to in Thessalonians? Esau, sir. Thank you. How do you know? How do you know? In this chapter, how do you know in this chapter it's referring to Esau? Uh, because so I know you know. So I know what you know. Oh, in verse in verse three, it talks about the son of perdition. We know that's Esau. Hey, where else? Where else? Where else? Where else? Yeah, where else? Uh, it's one word. Same chapter. No run. Same chapter. Three is good. I like three. Where else? Uh. I don't get, oh, this is, take your time, and if you look at verse 8, it says the wicked. Very good, excellent, y'all all right up here, man, y'all all right, all praises, that's right, the wicked, excellent, excellent, that wicked, be revealed, going back to the son of perdition, being revealed in verse 3, excellent, I want more, I'm trying to make sure y'all alive up here, man, so I'm asking y'all these questions, all right, so Isaiah 14, 14, you can preset that with it. Um, Thessalonians 2 and 4. Anywhere else you want to go? One more? Want to try one more? Yes. I'll give you a hint. New Testament. Shalom, brother uh, Shalom. Gideon. I got uh, Revelation 18. 18 and what? Uh, 12 through 13. 18, 12 through 13? Or 11 through 13. Let me see if I want that. Hold on. Regarding what? Regarding traffic. Oh, yeah, you on point with that one. Excellent. What about um, the sit, uh, sit upon the seas? What about that one? That's one more time. What about I sit upon the seas in, his, in, um, his, in, uh, in that one? Where would you go in Revelation for that? Uh, I will go to, uh, I will go to uh, verse 2. Oh, one more. Verse 2 and 18? Reve sit upon the seas? 18 and 2. The seas? Uh, sit upon the seas, 18 2? Seventeen and verse 
5. The book of Revelations, chapter 17, verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the no, Great. No, sorry, 17, 1 and 15. All right, yes, sir. Book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. She sits where? Upon many waters. 15. What, what do the waters represent? Verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest. Another word for waters. Where do, where another, the, no, another word for waters. Another word for waters. Seas. Read again. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So now you understand that, that Babylon un undergoes different titles. You have Tyrus, you have Babylon, that's an example. The wicked, Edom, same thing. Assyrian, same, same titles. All titles of oppressive, oppressive nations. You understand? That boast themselves to be God when they're not. And conquer God's people when they should not. Even though God allows them to because they're wicked as hell. Where we at? Uh, what one, I want uh, Ezekiel 28 again? No, let that go. That goes into Tyrus. They, they, they got it. Go back to where we were at before. Zechariah? Or? Yeah, Zechariah. 9 verse 4. 9 verse 3. The book of Zechariah, chapter 9 verse 3. And Tyrus did build herself a stronghold and heaped up silver as the dust and fine gold as the mire of the streets. Behold, the Lord will cast her out. The Lord will cast out Tyrus. Go ahead. And he will smite her power in the sea. He will smite her power in the sea, going into what? Her navy. Her military. Her, her power in the sea. Go ahead. And she shall be devoured with fire. So as ancient Tyrus is devoured with fire, so will this Tyrus be devoured with fire as well. Go ahead. Next verse. Verse 5. Ashkelon shall see. Ashkelon is a coastal city of Israel. It borders the coast to the Mediterranean Sea. It's like a beach area, Ashkelon. It's the coastal city of Israel today. So it's saying Israel will see this place burn. Go ahead. And fear. Gaza also shall see it. Gaza is part of Israel too. It's right, the Gaza Strip is right there. Go ahead. Remember, remember earlier, Assyria's, when Assyria took the land over, that was part of their land too. Gaza showed that. The green circle, the green ring that you saw, it mentioned the Gaza Strip. Go ahead. Gaza shall see it. Go ahead. And be very sorrowful. And Ekron, for her expectation, shall be ashamed. Ekron is going into modern day Tel Mikna. Tel Mik. Mikna, Makana, whatever. That's another part of Israel as well. Modern Israel too. Go ahead. And the king shall perish from Gaza. And Ashkelon shall not be inhabited. The leader shall be killed. Verse 6. Watch this. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. A what? A bastard. Shall dwell in Ashdod. A bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Ashdod is modern day Tel Aviv. Okay? Modern day Tel Aviv and Ekron is Tel Mikna. M I Q. I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't care to pronounce it. It's Tel M I Q N E. Tel M I Q N E. Mikna or whatever. Makana or whatever. I don't know. But that's the modern term for today. Akron, 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 same thing. Read verse 6 again. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. This is be who, 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 so who's the bastard that dwells in Israel today? Israelis. The Israelis. You say Israelites? The hell is this? You said Israelites? Oh, oh okay. I supposed to say Israelites. What the hell is this? Israelis, yes, yes. Amalekites, yes. A bastards, they have no father. They're bastards. Shall dwell in Ashdod. Go ahead. And I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. And I will what? And I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. Who are the Philistines here? How do you know it's the Arabs? Don't call it out. How do you know it's the Arabs? Raise your hand. You see who said the Arabs? Whoever called out Arab, put your hand up. Don't be scared. Whoever said Arabs, I heard like eight voices. Whoever called out Arab, put your hand up. Keep your hand up. So I can call on you. One, two, three. Just three? Y'all y'all playing games. Y'all hiding now. All right, cool. Keep your hands up so I know. How you know it's the Arabs? Philistines are Arabs. Bring them to the to the right part right first. I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. You say it's the Arabs. Why do you say it's the Arabs? Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Uh, that's because that's who's in Israel right now. 
departed lands. Give me more. Uh, what do you mean Phil the, Phil the Philistines part? The Philistines. Yes, Why do you that's, say that's Arabs. Oh, from was it? Uh, don't, 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 don't ask me. No, I'm not. I'm not asking. But I know the lands is parted between Edom or Amalek and Philistine, who are the modern day Arabs. Which will be called what today? Palestinians. Which is what? Which word is that? In the, which word is that in this verse? Palestine. Thank you. Philistine. Oh, Philistine. Philistines. I'm sorry. Right, it's Palestine. Philistine. It's the same yes. thing. Look it up, please. Type in Philistine. It's Palestine. For us. Anybody can see it. Thank you. Very good. Philistine is Palestine. That's a modern term. Or Palestina. Palestina, Palestinian, Palestine, or, or Philistia, Philistine is the same place. All right? You can write that down if you want. Palestine and Philistine or Philistia is the same place. Palestine, Philistine. Read, it, read that right there. Jez, you got it? Yes, sir. Read that. The word Palestine derives from Philistia, the name given by Greek writers to the land of the Philistines. So when the Greeks took over, they named the, the land Philistia or Philistine, Palestine or Palestina. You understand? It's the same landmass. So the pride, it says the Ashdod will be cut off, and it says the Arabs will be cut off the land too. Why? Because God will be jealous for the land. Going back, to, going back to Joel 2 and 18. All right? Now, let's go to Zephaniah 2 and 3. Zephaniah 2 and 3. It mentioned that Gaza shall be, Gaza, Ekron, and Ashkelon will be ashamed when they see Tyrus on fire and her navy is destroyed. Zephaniah 2 and verse 3. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. We read this earlier about gather yourselves together, or nation not desire. That's verse 1. Go ahead. Which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Verse 4. Verse 4. For Gaza shall be forsaken. For Gaza shall be us in Zechariah 9. For Gaza shall be forsaken. Go ahead. And Ashkelon a desolation. Because they're going to be hit with bombs. The northern army gonna come over there and find the land barren and desolate. That's Joel 2:20. Same thing based upon the war with who? The Carmanians and the Arabs. Read again. For Gaza shall be forsaken, and Ashkelon a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday. So this is going on to that world war. They shall drive out who? Ashdod at the noonday. They shall drive out that bastard at noonday. The war will start over there at noonday. Go ahead. And Akron shall be rooted up. Woe unto the inhabitants of the seacoast. That who's the seacoast? That's Ashkelon. That's that Gaza Strip. That's that seacoast, Mediterranean seacoast. Go ahead. The nation of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan. The land of the Philistines, I will even destroy thee. The land of the Philistines, I will even destroy you. O what? Palestina. Palestina. O Palestina. Read again. Woe unto the inhabitants of the sea coast, the nation of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan. O Canaan, Israel, go ahead. The land of the Philistines, I will even destroy thee. I will destroy you also, go ahead. That there shall be no inhabitant. There shall be no inhabitant. When that, when that, that's the wars, when the end all wars, that's talking about that, that noonday. That's that nuclear, that's that World War Three there. But no one going to be there. That's what it's alluding to. That's that nuclear destruction there. Get out, um, is that verse 5? Yes, sir. Give me um, Isaiah 14, 31. Now we're going back to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. You read 29 already about our Palestina. Now we're going to read verse 30 and 31. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 30. 31. Start at verse 30, Deacon? Yeah. All right, yes, sir. And the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy shall lie down in safety. That's us. We're going to be safe. We're going to be all right when that takes place. Go ahead. And I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall slay thy remnant. How, O gate, cry, Hold O on. city. I will kill thy root with famine, and, and slay thy remnant. It's referring to O Palestina, as he's talking to. The firstborn of the poor is us. Give me Isaiah. Um, I was going to say it in the Bible, the verse. But the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy shall lie down in safety. 
that's us. And I will kill thy root with famine and say thy remnant. That's referring to Arabs, Palestinians. Go ahead. Verse 31. How, O gate, cry, O city, thou whole Palestina. Whole Palestine. Go ahead. Art dissolved. Art dissolved. Why? Going back to that noonday. Go ahead. For there shall come from the north a smoke. And none shall be alone in, in his appointed time. that smoke? That's that fiery serpent above back in verse 29. And that army to follow afterwards, that northern army to follow. Y'all understand? Read on. What shall one then answer the messages of the nation? We're going to prove that the, that the firstborn of the poor and needy is us. Verse 32. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? That the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. The poor of his people, Zion, shall trust in it. And trust in what? The prophecies written before this verse. The entire chapter and the chapter before it will come to pass. We must trust in it. That's what he's saying. Give me Zephaniah. No, give me Jeremiah 49. Yeah. Read verse 31 again for me. Yes, sir. Book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 31. How, O gate, cry, O city, thou whole Palestina. I did it. Okay, read, read. How, O gate, cry, O city, thou whole Palestina. Ho, o, cry, O city, whole Palestina. I mean the Arabs, read on. Or dissolve. They're going to be dissolved. They're going to be destroyed. Read on. For there shall come from the north a smoke. That smoke that's going to come from the north is what Deacon brought out early on. Mm -hmm. All right? The northern army, when they're afflicting us, while they're afflicting us, the Carmanians and the Arabs going to come together, and they're going to and they're gonna got, get the upper hand over, over those, those fake Jews in that land. Oh. Uh-huh. So when that happened... Okay, the the um the military, the American military gonna go over there. All right? This is the American military right here, the mer the military that's in the north. Mm -hmm. Okay, that north smoke is are talking about the northern army that we read in Joel two and two. Two and twenty. Mm -hmm. Two and twenty, my bad. All right. And the and also go alluding to the fiery serpent back in verse twenty nine. Right. And it's also re re um talking about that. Fiery serpent that we read in verse twenty nine. That will take place on it. That will take place um before the army arrives there. That's why it says the army will arrive there to a land barren and desolate because mm -hmm. that nuke that bomb is gonna hit them first, and then they're, they're gonna be they're gonna be the uh, reinforcements. Mm -hmm. All right, now give me um Jeremiah forty nine and verse seven. The book of Jeremiah chapter forty nine verse seven. Concerning Edom, thus saith the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in Teman? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of the dawn. For I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him, the time that I will visit him. Right. If grape gatherers come to thee, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? If thieves by night, they would destroy till they have enough. Right, that's how Edom is. Edom, is an, Edom steals. He's the, remember back in Zechariah, he's that thief. He's that great thief the Bible talks about. When thieves still think they, they still to have enough, Esau still is till it's all gone, till nothing's left. Go ahead. Verse 10. But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbor, and he is not. Leave thy fatherless children. I will preserve them alive, and let thy widows trust in me. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. Damn. Go ahead. Verse 13. Now verse 12. Go ahead. Verse 13. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Basra shall become a desolation, mm -hmm. a reproach, a waste, and a curse. And all the cities thereof shall be perpetual That's waste. That's that noonday. You read earlier. Go ahead. I have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent unto the heathen, saying, Gather ye together, and come against her, and rise up to the battle. For, lo, I will make thee small among the heathen, and despised among men. 
Thy terribleness have deceived thee in the pride of thy heart, O, o thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, thou, that holdest the height of the hill, though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle. Nest is as high as what? As the eagle. As high as the eagle. Make your nest as high and going into the mountains, going into eventually going into space in the sky. And it represent the eagle. Go ahead. I will bring thee down from thence, saith the Lord. Right, so I'm bringing you down. Go ahead. Verse 17. Also Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there. Neither shall a son of man dwell in It'll it. It'll be destroyed as referring to America. Go ahead. Behold, he shall, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the habitation of the strong. But I will suddenly make him run away from her. And who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me? And who will appoint me the time? Who is, and who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Verse 20 is what I want. Verse 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he have taken against Edom. Go ahead. And his purposes that he have purposed against the, the inhabitants of Teman. Watch this. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. The what? Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. The least of the flock of Edom is the so-called is Israelis. They're the least. He's going to draw all the nations out to battle. The conflict starts with the least of Edom. That's Amalek there. The least. Israelis is the least of them. Because you got Russia. You got America. That's the great. But the least is the Israelis. They're going to, they're going to be the, 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 the whole conflict will begin starting with them. And World War III will start with them. The least of them. Read it, as I read it, it says, um, read it again, the bottom part. Surely what? Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Watch this. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. See that? He shall make their habitations desolate um, with them. I mean, the, the um, least of them. Go back to um, where we were at before. What was that? About the, Zephaniah, what was that? Noonday. Yeah, Noonday. Yeah, Zephaniah. Uh, Zephaniah. Go back to Zephaniah again. Bishop brought something out real quick. Bishop brought something out real quick. Zephaniah. A certain name he used. Two Zep and five. Zephaniah chapter two, verse five. Woe unto the inhabitants of the sea coast, the nation of the Cherethites. The Cherethites is going in back into Palestinians, uh, the nation of Philistines. So it's still done with Arabs there too. Nation of the Cherethites is going into Pel Pel Philistines or Palestinians. Same thing. All right? That's what it's going into. So verse 4 is Israel, and verse 5 is Palestine. The garden of destruction, their mutual destruction between the two. And their battle against each other. All right? Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? One second. Hey, jump back to that scripture you had read early on in Jeremiah. Even the least yeah. of the nations okay. shall I draw thee out. Um, Read that again. Yes, sir. I think it's verse 14. 20. Verse 20. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 49, verse 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he have taken against Edom. And his purposes, that he had purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. What is this going into? This is going into what is going to start World War Three. You understand? It's going, going right back to Isaiah 34. Okay, where it says that um, the controversy over Zion. It's going to Zephaniah... Is, is it Zephaniah where it says the burdensome stone? Whosoever, yep, he said, whosoever take up that burden, you want to mess with the land of Israel, you're taking a burdensome stone. Mm -hmm. Okay, because the most I have a determination for that land and for all the inhabitants of that land. Okay, which we're going to touch on a little later on. Okay? Yep. Give me second, se give me second Kings 17. Thank you, D.W.R. That's a good point. Give me second Kings 17, verse 24, real quick. Regarding why the Lord referred to Edom as Assyria, because all the nations share the same attributes, and Edom oftentimes borrows from everybody, because this nation has no culture at all. Yep. Second Kings 17, 
This is what, well, particularly what Amalek does or has done. 2 Kings 17, 24. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 17, verse 24. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Cutha and from Ava, Ava and from Hamath. What Edom did today was Edom put um, East Indians in there. He put, um, you have Russians there. A variety of nations that don't belong. They say, oh, the, the East Indians that live there, they're, those, those, that's Manasseh. I'm like, what? Manasseh? The hell is this? So he put them, he put them there. So Edom put foreign nations in the land. That's why it says he brought it out for a prey. Because they'll invite foreign nations to live there, including himself. Read again. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon uh -huh. and from Cutha and from Ava and from Hamas. Syria. Syrians live there too. Syrians live there too. Go ahead. And from Saravim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria. And placed them in the cities of what? The land of Israel. Go ahead. Watch this. Instead of the children of Israel. Instead of the rightful owners of the land. Now, read on. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. Right. So that la our land became the land of Assyria because Assyria took the land as their own. Watch this. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord. Therefore, the Lord sent lions among them, which slew some of them. Because they were worshiping their gods in our land. So God, thought, God sent lions among them to kill them in the land. Watch this. Verse 26. Wherefore, they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the man of the God of the land. Therefore, he hath sent lions among them. And behold, they slay them, because they know not the manner of the God of the land. Watch verse 27. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom ye brought from thence. Bring, bring back a Jew, a real one, Israelite, to, the, to this land to teach, to teach us how to keep the commandments here. Go ahead. Or certain commandments here. Go ahead. And let them go and dwell there. And let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. Go ahead. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. So these so-called learned how to be Jews from who? from real Jews, and then took our land. When they was in the land of, K of Khazaria, which is modern-day Ukraine, we taught them the laws of God, and we resided there. Then, during the, that Belfar Declaration, they came over here based upon what we taught them and took the land over as Jews or Jewish people, doing the exact same thing that they did, that the Assyrians did, the exact same thing. Learned our ways and assumed their identity. That's exactly what they did. Or came to this side of the world and said, oh, man, let's learn your ways. How to, the pilgrims, how you grow that? How do you um, use that? How do you survive in these weather conditions? Oh, okay, thank you. I'm an Indian now. $5, $5, $5, I'm an Indian now. It's my land now. Same thing. They did it over here and did it over there. Assyrians. Thank you, Deacon Abiel. Excellent point. Now, where we at? Give me Ezekiel uh, 36, 33. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 33. Thus saith the Lord God, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the waste shall be builded. And the what? And the waste shall be built. Why will it be wasted? Because of the war that takes place over the land. It's going to be um, dest um, destruction, damage to the land from all the missiles in the war over the conflict of the land, the controversy over the land. He's going to have us do what? Inhabit the waste places. Read on. And the desolate land shall be tilled. And the desolate land shall be tilled. Read on. Whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. Go ahead. Verse 35. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. Because it was before the Garden of Eden. It will be like the Garden of Eden again. Hey, that's going back into Revelation where... Where we gonna build a build a city and lay it with gold and the buildings that are gonna be erected there, the nations gonna bring all the riches up. That's after all of that is finished. Yep. You know, but when we go back into that, when we just go back into that land, it's gonna be a waste place. Why? From all the wars that's gonna be taking place there in the future. Right. All right. Be on. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Because we're living there now. Go ahead. Then the heathen that are left round about, ye shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places and plant that 
that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. You know Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by, of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock. He's going to make us grow like a flock. We're going to grow a number all over again. Go ahead. Verse 38. As the holy flock. We will be the holy. I'll go back to Isaiah. I'll make one man a thousand. Isaiah 60 and 22, I believe it is. Go ahead. As the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feast, so shall the way cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Right. Give me Zephaniah 2 and 6 now. We read 4 and 5. Give me 2, give me two 6 and 7. Regarding us inhabiting our land again, inhabiting our land back. The, the book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 6. So notice the land is going to be plenteous and be able to be tilled when the rightful owners are there. Right now it's desolate garbage that requires land, that requires plants to be imported there. Because God's people are not there in its entirety. So they ain't going to grow because the wrong people are there. Cain is there. So the land over there is cursed until he gets out of there. So right now, it's still Canaan, as far as I'm concerned. When Israel gets there, then it'll be Israel again. Zephaniah 2 and 6. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 6. And the seacoast shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds and fold the for The seacoast goes back to what? Eshkelon, Gaza, um, Akron. That's the seacoast. Shall be for what? Read again. And the seacoast shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds and folds for flocks. Go ahead. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. For who? For the remnant of the house of Judah. Go ahead. They shall feed thereupon in the houses of Ashkelon. There you go. Shall they lay down in the evening. For the Lord their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. And put us back in our lands that belong to us. All right? That goes right back to Ezekiel 36. Give me 2 Ezra 15, 32. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 15, verse 32. Then these shall be troubled and keep silence through their power and shall flee. And from the land of the Assyrians shall the enemy besiege them and uh -huh. consume some of them. And in their host shall be fear and dread and strife among their kings. Right, hold on. Mm. Go to Joel 3. Joel 3. The book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, uh -huh. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. The, middle, the Near East, go ahead. And I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and, and what? parted my land. And did what? And parted my land. Did what? Parted my land. That's the whole conflict. And parted my land. Right? And, and they have cast lots for my people. And have given a boy for an harlot. And sold a girl for wine. That they might drink. Yea. And what have ye to do with me, O, o Tyre and, and Zidon? And all the coast of Palestine. Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Read verse 4 again. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Hamites, Africans. And all the coast of Palestine. All the coast of who? Palestine. Who's this? Now you know. Palestine, Palestina, Philistines, Cherethites, same thing. Go ahead. Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because these nations are responsible for putting us in captivity and removing us from our land and taking our land in their possession. Go ahead. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. Verse 6. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians. In this instance, it will be the Portuguese, the Spanish, the Dutch, the French. Go ahead. The that, Grecians. That ye might remove them far from their borders. That you remove us far from, from our border and put yourselves in our borders. Go ahead. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither you have sold them. And will return your recompense upon your own head. Jump to verse 9. Verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Prepare what? Prepare war. The third woe. Go ahead. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. That's the what? That's the northern army. One of us counting, counting that includes them also. Go ahead. Let them come up. 
Beat your plowshares into swords. Prepare for battle. And your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let, let them enlist in the army. Go ahead. Verse 11. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen. All ye who? All ye heathen. Go ahead. And gather yourselves together round about. Thither, cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Go ahead. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Near east, go ahead. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Come on. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get ye down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Fourteen. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. After the battle of Armageddon begins. Jump down to verse 19. Watch what happens after that. Verse 19. Egypt shall be a desolation. Egypt shall be what? A desolation. Now, remember, remember Assyria had a portion of, of Egypt as well. It shall be a desolation. That's the portion of the Assyrians. Egypt is part of that. Egypt should be a what? Egypt shall be a desolation. Go ahead. And Edom shall be a desolate wilderness. Destroyed also. Go ahead. For the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. Just second, like just 15, 33. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 15, verse 33. And from the land of the Assyrians shall the enemy besiege them and consume some of them. And in their hosts shall be fear and dread and strife among their kings. Behold clouds from the east and from the north unto the south. And they are very horrible to look upon, full that's of wrath to, and scorn. to what? The valley of decision. Judge, we read in Joel 3 earlier. Go ahead. They shall smite one upon another. It's going to be battle, war against each other. Go ahead. And they shall smite down a great multitude of stars upon the earth, even their own stars. That's the missiles. Go ahead. And blood shall be from the sword unto the belly. Much death. Go ahead. And dung of men unto the camel's toe. Same to thing. the camel's hose. Much death. Bodies everywhere. Go ahead. 37. Verse 37. And there shall be great fearfulness and trembling upon earth. And they that see the wrath shall be afraid, and trembling shall come upon them. That's the, that's the um, mark, of the, mark of the end. Go ahead. And then shall there come great storms from the south. The great storms going into armies. Go ahead. And from the north, another, and another part from the west. The west is America. Another part from the west. That's America. Go ahead. And strong winds shall, shall arise so from wait, the east. 38 again? 38 one more time. Verse 38. And then shall there come great storms from the south and from the north, another part from the west. America, go ahead. Hey, man. Yo, <laughs> yo, you got to talk mean, man. Yeah. You know, this this supposed to be a tag team, yo. You know, we should, you know, I like, damn, Deacon Idol ain't going to give me a chance to go in, man. <laughs> You've been going for like two, on, two hours and 45 minutes. I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. Yeah, man, I ain't going to be long. Yo, you're tired, yo, we just call it and do a part three or yo, me keep going. Keep going, right? Keep going, right? All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so read that verse again. And verse 38. Now, nah, read, read start at verse 37. 37, sorry. And there shall be great fearfulness and trembling upon earth. And they that see the wrath shall be afraid, and trembling shall come upon them. Oh, no, start at verse 5. Start at verse 35, sorry. Verse 35. They shall smite one upon another. And they shall smite down a great multitude of stars upon the earth. So you all understand that them stars that are being smited down on the earth is what? It's missiles. All right. What we're reading here is what's taking place in the valley of Jehoshaphat. Okay. That's what we're reading. Okay. Read on. They this is the beginning of World War Three, The third woe. All right. And it's in this woe right here where them nuclear weapons going to be used. All right? It's not going to take place with what you see going on in Iran right now. You see them fighting and Russia threatening um, Ukraine. Russia is threatening Ukraine that, and America. Listen, I got my, um, my um, nuclear weapons on high alert, so you all fall back. Russia is not going to use no bombs on America right now. Okay? We're going to give you all a prophecy of when it's going to happen and how it's going to happen. And why it's happening? It's happening because they enslave you all. Okay? That's why it's happening. And what's going to cause the war is those fake Jews that's living in the land of Israel. Okay? Right? So um, read that for me. Verse, uh, Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 35. Yeah, keep on reading. They shall smite one upon another, and they shall smite down a great multitude of stars upon the earth. 
Even their own star. Even their own stars. Read on. And blood the shall star be. The star is talking about missiles. Read on. And blood shall be from the sword unto the belly. And a lot of people going to die. Okay, read on. And dung of men unto the camel's hoe. And there shall be great fearfulness and trembling upon earth. So when, when people see this war going on, when you hear about this war going on in the Middle East, some of you are going to be here in America. Some of you are going to be in different countries and so forth. As you all hear this war going on, the scripture said there's going to be much trembling on the earth. Read on. And they that see the wrath shall be afraid, and trembling shall come upon them. And then shall there come great storms from the south. So it says, then shall there come great storms from the south. Okay. The south, I want you all to write this down. The south is the Arabs. Okay. It's Saudi Arabia, all them Arab nations. The great storm is talking about the armies. Okay. Read on. And from the north. And from the north, the north is talking about Europe. Okay, that's what the North is talking about. Europe, the ten common mark, the ten common markets. Read on. And another part from the West. And, and when it when it mentioned this, it's talking about, um, it's talking about each location away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the pos is the position right there. Is um is the ge 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 you say it? Geographical. geographical location. All right, all the south, the north is all determined from where Israel is. Right, Israel is the center. So the north is talking about Europe, okay? You see uh, up there in Europe, you got um, France and all them countries up there. Okay, so read on. Verse 39, and strong winds shall arise from the east. From the east, the east is talking about China. It's talking about North Korea. Okay, read on. And shall open it. No, and read it again. I'm missing some. Read it again. Yes, sir. Verse 39. And strong winds shall arise from the east and shall open it. And strong winds shall arise from the east and open it. The it that is going to open is its silos where they, where they have what? Them nuclear weapons. So China is going to use nuclear weapons. Okay, read on. And the cloud. Which In this war that's going to take place, China going to be the first one to use nuclear weapons. No, they're going to be one of the ones to use nuclear weapons. Read on. And the cloud, which he raised up in wrath. And when he used it, a cloud going to be raised up in wrath. Okay? Meaning when they use them weapons, somebody going to be angry. And I'm going to show you who that going to be. Keep on reading. And the star stirred to cause fear toward the east and west wind. So it says this. Star, this cloud or this star that's going to be raised up, it's going to cause fear towards the east and the west wing, wind. The, the, remember what Deacon Eitan went over? The east wind is talking about, the wind is talking about the armies. Okay, the east wind is talking about North Korea, China, and so forth. The west wind is talking about who? It's talking about America. Okay, because when you listen to the news, you always hear them over there talk about what? Amer the west. The West, who they talking about? America. Okay, because America is, is ge 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 geologically um, West from, from um, Israel. Okay? Keep on reading. Shall be destroyed. Read that again. Read it again. And strong winds shall arise from the East and shall open it. From China and open it is the silos. Read on. And the cloud which he raised up in wrath. And the stars stirred to call fear so, toward the east and west wind. So somebody going to be ro risen up to, to um, cause fear towards the east wind and the west wind. wind. The east wind is China and um, North Korea. The west wind is America. Read on. Shall be destroyed. So according to the prophecies, China and American armies going to be destroyed. That's the prophecy. Their armies going to be destroyed. What we're talking about here, we're talking about World War III. Okay, we're giving you all, we're letting you all know what's going to happen before it happens. This is what's going to happen. Okay, China and American armies there in the Middle East, they're going to be destroyed. Okay, keep on reading. Verse 40, the great and mighty clouds shall be lifted up. So this great and mighty cloud that's lifted up, right? This is the same, this is the cloud that's going to destroy American army. And the same cloud that's going to destroy the Chinese army. Okay, read it again. The great and mighty clouds shall be lifted up, full of wrath. So he's going to be full of wrath. These, these clouds 
going to be full of wrath. You all want to realize it don't say cloud. It says what? Clouds. Why does it refer to this army as clouds? Okay, when it mentioned about other armies as cloud, just one, singular, but it mentioned plural here, meaning it's more than one nation here. Okay, that's why it says clouds. Okay, so the European, new, this right here is talking about the European nation. It's talking about the ten horns. All right, that's what this clouds, these clouds right here is talking about, the ten horns. Okay, so according to prophecy, the ten horns is going to destroy the eastern wind and what? And the western wind, which is American armies. Okay, so I want you to go to Jeremiah 50 and 41. Okay, yeah, so check it. I want you to play that video. I send you, let me see which video I sent. Yeah, number one. Now, what's taking place? How oh, Europe got their own army now. What, what is going to take place? Because right now, how Europe army is set up? They got NATO set up, and they all come together under NATO, under America, or they look for America for protection. But something is taking place right now. They had a meeting yesterday. The um, prime minister, the presidents of France, came together with all the European nations and they say we need to form our military. We can't depend on America to defend us. And that's what's going on right now. Okay, they have the European, the Ten Horns is forming their army and I'm going to show you all that in the scripture. But, but first I want to show you all this. Read, play that for me. Back now to President Trump. Wheels down. We were watching it live here as he landed in Paris for the commemoration of the 100-year anniversary of the end of World War I. He'll join leaders this weekend from dozens of other countries. Now, just before he landed with the First Lady, the president took to the Twitter, and he wrote this. President Macron of France has just suggested that Europe build its own military in order to protect itself from the U.S., China, and Russia. Very insulting, but perhaps Europe should first pay its fair share of NATO, right, which so the U.S. subsidizes. Take that down. Take that down. Take that down. So this was a couple of years back when, just before Trump left office, the prime, the prime minister, the president of of France, he said Europe need their own army to protect them from Russia, China, and America. Okay. Now there's another video. I will you play that other video. That I send you. Let me tell you which one it is. Okay. Verse, um, yeah, uh, 10, 10 video. Number 10, I think it is. Verse 23. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, 10 verse 23. You me <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, number 10. Thank you, my brother. Everything, everything flowing in me is just like scriptures, you know what I mean? Go to, go to um, 23. So what I'm showing you all, I'm showing you all prophecy being fulfilled. Okay? Two years ago, um, the, the, European, the European Union, them ten horns, they are in talks of creating their own military and not depending on America anymore. To protect themselves from Russia and from China and from America. What we just read here in 2nd Ezra, it says the west wind, which is America, going to be destroyed. And the east wind, which is China, going to be destroyed. Okay? So, um, you got that? Play that. Play that. And not every Western country feels safe or comfortable with that. This was this week. What we would really like to avoid is providing jets to Ukraine and then being left alone because it was our call. These differences could become deeper in the coming days. French President Emmanuel Macron is about to host European leaders for talks. And he's expected to make another pitch for a European army. It's his pet project. He wants a European army. Ahead of these talks, Macron said, and I quote, Our European defense needs to enter a new phase. We can no longer depend on others. Read that as we can no longer depend on the U.S. Macron made no effort to hide its, his intentions. He is sending this message to the United States, the power that is holding back the delivery of fighter jets so to So take Ukraine. that down. I hope you all see what's going on. Prophecy is being fulfilled. Prophecy is being fulfilled. Europe is, is building an army. Okay? 
Read that in 2 Ezra again. Read that again, man. 2 Ezra 15. The book That's of great storm. Read it again. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 15, verse 38. And then shall there come great storms from the south and from the north and another part from the west. And strong winds shall arise from the east and shall open it. And the cloud which he raised up in wrath and the star stirred to cause fear toward the east and west wind shall be destroyed. So the east wind and the west wind going to be destroyed. Who they going to be destroyed by? By the ten horns, by Europe, the European Union. Keep on reading. Verse 40. The great and mighty clouds shall be lifted up, full so of the, wrath. So the great and mighty cloud is the ten horns. Okay, now, before I go there, go to Jeremiah 50. Jeremiah 50 and 41. Get that and read that for me. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 41. Behold, a people shall come from the north. And a, a people shall come from where? The north. From where? The north. From the north. All right. This people that are coming from the north is talking about is talking about Europe. All right. Because the north is north of where? Israel is Europe. Okay, read on. And a great nation and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. And many kings shall be raised up because it's what? It's ten horns, right? But today is over 27 nations that came together. Read on. Verse 42. They shall hold the bow and the lance. They are cruel and will not show mercy. So they're going to hold the bow and the, and the lance. This is weapons of war. Okay? And it says they shall not show mercy. They shall not show mercy to who? Keep on reading. Their voice shall roar like the sea. Their voice shall roar like the sea. Read on. And they shall ride upon horses. Read on. Everyone put in array like a man to the battle against thee. O daughter of Babylon. Against who? O daughter of Babylon. So this is the ten horns going fighting against America. Because the daughter of Babylon is who? Is America. Okay, let's get that in Psalms 137. Deacon Eitan read it early on, but just to refresh your memory. Okay, Psalms 137. Okay, the daughter of Babylon. This right here is what we read in 2nd Ezra and what we're about to read in Revelation also. These kings that are going to rise up is talking about these, I'm talking about the 10 common markets that we read about in, um, in, in Revelation 17. Okay? You got that? Yes, sir. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 137, verse... So who is the daughter of Babylon? Okay, so this, letting you know, it's not talking about ancient Babylon. It's talking about the daughter of Babylon, which is where? Which is America. Read on. Verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. Read on. O daughter of Babylon. O who? O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed. So Edom is the daughter of Babylon. From there, jump to Jeremiah. Jump to, no, jump to Revelation. 17 and 12. So what I'm showing you all is 2 Ezra 40, 2 Ezra 15 and 40, that's going into the 10 horns. And I'm going to show you all that. That's going into the 10 horns that are going to destroy America. And not just America, they're going to destroy the Chinese army also. Okay, that's talking about Europe. Okay, read that for me. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet. Because they wasn't around at that time when, when John wrote that. They, wasn't, they didn't have no kingdom as yet. The, ten, um, the European Union wasn't set up as yet. Read on. But receive power as kings one hour with the beast. So they set up as king, as rulers, one hour with America. Okay, with the beast. Read on. These have one mind. They have one mind, read on. And shall give their power. And you all see what's going on in Europe. They all have one mind. All the 27 countries have one mind. Was well, 10 countries, that's how it started, but right now it's over 27 countries. Read on. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. So they all, after World War II, they all gave their power and strength to America. They formed the NATO alliance. All right, and they gave their strength to America. America was the head ruling them and so forth. 
So they all gave their power and strength to America. But right now, they are with taking away that power and that strength from America. That's what's going on right now. They all are taking that power and strength from America. That's why you got Britain what? Britain left the European Union. Okay, betwixt. Bre Bre Brexit. Okay, keep on reading. D shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. So who going to make war with the Lamb? The European nations, them ten horns. They're going to make war with Christ. Why, why then say America going to make war with Christ? Because what? America going, as I keep on reading, I'm going to show you what's going to happen to America. Okay? Keep on reading. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings. Read and, on. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Verse 15. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations. So that whore is talking about America. Yes, America is a whore. She's a nasty, dirty, filthy whore. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on reading. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast shall hate the whore. So these ten horns is what we just read about in where? In Jeremiah 50 and 41. Okay, these ten kings are going to rise up and going to destroy the daughter of Babylon. That's these ten horns. Okay, these ten horns shall hate the whore. They're going to hate America. Okay, in, 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 in the future, the European Union is going to turn against America and they're going to hate her. Okay, that's what's going to take place. Okay, read, it, read that again. Verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So they're going to destroy America with fire. Now let's go to 2 Ezra and read that. Okay, go to 2 Ezra 15 and keep on reading. 2 Ezra 15. So, so the ten horns going to burn America with fire. Go to 2 Ezra 15 and 40 and read that for me. And all of this is taking place in what? World War Three. You understand? All of this is taking place over what? The controversy of Zion. All of this is taking place where? In the valley of Jehoshaphat. The valley of decision. And why it's taking place? Because of what they did to God's people. Okay? Read. It's the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 15, verse 40. The great and mighty clouds shall be lifted up. So that great and mighty, read it again. The great and mighty clouds shall the be lifted up. The great and mighty clouds. Is the ten common markets. Is the European nations. Read on. Full of wrath. If they're going to be lift up. They're going to be full of wrath. America going to do something to get them mad. Okay. China going to do something to get them mad. They're going to be lifted up full of wrath. Okay. Read on. And the star that they may make all the earth afraid. And they're going to make all the earth afraid with, with that star that they're going to rise up to. Okay. Meaning what? The star is going into what? Nuclear weapon. Okay? Missiles. Okay? Keep on reading. And them that dwell therein, and they shall pour out over every high and eminent place. So and this is talking about the ten horns. They're going to pour out over on every, every famous city, every, every um, eminent, eminent, eminent. Eminent places like important places, important places important. vital places, vital cities. All right? They're going to do what? Read it again. And them that dwell therein, and they shall pour out over every high and eminent place and horrible star. A horrible star. That's what? A bomb. That's, yep, Washington, D.C., New York, all these places. You understand? You feel me? Even in the Middle East, certain places over there. This is, this is what the ten horns is going to do. Okay? All right, read on. Verse 41. Fire and hail. And flying swords. Fire and hail and flying swords. That's what we keep showing you. When these missiles is shoot out, it looks like flying swords. You understand what I'm saying? Read on. And many waters, that all fields may be full. So all fields going to be full. Read on. And all rivers. And with, all rivers going to be full. Read on. With the abundance of great water. So what is this going into? This is going into when you see... The European Union, the ten horns, they go, when you see the Lego, these bombs, it's going to do what? 
Let me show you all this real quick. Go to Revelation. Revelation 8. Revelation 8 and 10. I'm about to show you all what they, what I'm showing you all what's going to happen. Okay? You all want to know why people are going to be dying of, of thirst and all of that? I'm showing you all what's going to happen. You, some of you all think, oh, we could live by the stream and get water to drink. Let me show you all what's going to happen. Read that for me. The book of Revelation, chapter 8, verse 10. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven. That great star is the same star that we're reading about here in 2 Ezra. Okay? Read on. Burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers. And it fell where? Up upon the third part of the river. That's the same thing we read in 2 Ezra. That they going to pour star am amongst every eminent city and on every um and in the water and in the rivers and so forth. It's the same thing we just read. Read on. And upon the mountains of water, uh, I'm sorry, upon the fountains of waters. Read on. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And it's called Wormwood. That's the name of that star. Okay, that nuclear bomb. Okay, read on. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. Read on, meaning, meaning it became bitter. Meaning poisonous. It became poisonous. Read on. And many men died of the waters. And many people died from drinking that water. So I'm letting you all know what's, this is what's going to take place in the World War III that's coming. The prophets on them saw it and they recorded it and they left it for us to understand. Okay? Now jump back to Second Ezra and keep on reading. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 15, verse 42. And now this, read verse 41 again. Yes, sir. Verse 41. Fire and hail and flying swords and many waters that all fields may be full and all rivers with the abundance of great waters. And they shall break down the cities and walls. And the missile is going to break down cities and walls. Read on. Mountains and hills. Mountains and hills going to be broken down. Read on. Trees of the wood. Read on. And, and grass of the meadows. Read on. And their corn. And they shall go steadfastly unto Babylon. And where is Babylon? Babylon is talking about America. So after they do this, it says they're going to go where? Steadfastly unto Babylon. That's what we read in what? In Revelation 17. Them, this is letting you know who that, that great, the great and mighty cloud, that's talking about the ten horns. Okay, that's talking about the European nations. All right, he said they're going to go steadfast into Babylon, which is America. Read on. And make her afraid. And they're going to make America afraid. Why? Because they already destroyed American armies already over there in the Middle East. Okay, read on. Verse 44. They shall come to her and besiege her. The star and all wrath shall the they... The star and all wrath, read on. Shall they pour out upon her. This is the judgment that's going to take place here in America. When you read Revelation 18, the whole chapter. Okay? Read that again. They shall come to her and besiege her. The star and all wrath shall they pour out upon her. Then shall the dust and smoke go up unto the heaven. Okay, so they're going to pour out them bombs on nuclear weapons in America. So all you white people that got them bomb shelters and so forth, guess what? Yo, listen, man. You know, you are doing the right thing. You understand? And when they pour them bombs in America and them missiles coming here to America, guess what? Brothers and sisters, Christ say, look up. You understand? He say, look up. Because in the midst of that destruction is where we're going to be delivered. Okay? He say, look up. Because in the, I'm, I'm showing you all step by step. The Lord show us step by step what's going to take place. Okay, the European nations, they're going to turn on America. You understand? And they're going to destroy America. All right? You know, and all that war going to start where? In the Middle East. Over who? who the, over the, who the land, the controversy of Zion. Who that land belongs to. Okay? That's what World War Three. that's what going to cause World War Three. Okay, keep on reading. And then shall the dust and the smoke go up unto the heaven, and all they that be about her shall be well her. And they that remain under her shall... Okay, so let's go to Revelation 18 and 19 and read the same thing real quick. Yes, sir. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 19. 
And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. In one hour she going to be destroyed. Read on America. This is talking about America. Read on. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets. For God have avenged you on her. So for God have avenged the Israelites. Okay. All right. So from there, I want you to jump to, jump, keep on reading. No, jump to Revelation 16. Revelation 16 and 17 and read that for me. The book of Revelation, chapter 16, verse 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vow into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. It is done. Okay, it is done. Read on. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth. That's that great war that's taking place. That's that great earthquake. Read on. So mighty an earthquake. And where that war going to start is going to start in where? The Valley of Jehoshaphat in the Middle East. All right. In, in, in that land over there. Read on. So mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts. And when them bombs drop, America going to be divided into three parts. Okay, it's not going to be one landmass anymore when them bombs drop over here. Read on. And the cities of the nations fell. And a lot of the cities of the other nations going to fell. All right, read on. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Read on. And every island fled away. And Jamaica going to disappear. <laughs> and Haiti going to disappear. Antigua going to disappear. Puerto Rico going to disappear. There's no islands going to be left anymore. Why is that? Because jump back to 2 Ezra and read that again. Verse 41. 2 Ezra chapter 15 verse 41. Fire and hell and flying swords and many waters that all fields may be full. So what they're going to do, they're going to be dropping bombs even in the waters. You feel what I'm saying? That's where you read about Wormwood. Imagine a nuclear bomb drop in the seawater. A couple of them. What do you think going to happen? You understand? A lot of the islands going to disappear, bro. Okay? So some of you all think, I'm going back to the islands to hide from World War Three or something. Listen, you're going to be buried underwater. Okay, you need the angels to deliver you when you see them, when them, when them big waves going to be coming. <laughs> Yo, so listen, jump back, keep, keep reading Ezra's, man. Yes, keep sir. reading Ezra's. And all rivers with the abundance of great waters, and they shall break down the cities and walls, mountains and hills, trees of the wood, and grass of the meadows, and their corn. And they shall go steadfastly unto Babylon. Unto America. Read on. And make her afraid. Read on. They shall come to her and besiege her. The star and all wrath shall they pour out upon her. And all wrath shall they pour out upon America. All right. So this is World War Three. America being destroyed. You understand? By the ten horns. Okay. Yo, it's 915. You want me to shut it down or keep going? All right, keep going. All right, I'll keep going. <laughs> I'll keep going. All right, so keep reading. Yes, sir. Then shall the dust and smoke go up unto the heaven. That's what we read in Revelation. The dust and smoke going to be going up from Babylon. Yeah, America. Read on. And all they that be about her shall be well her. Going to be well, America. Read on. And they that remain under her shall. And they that remain under America, meaning America going to have. Nations that they have alliance with, probably like Japan and other nations. Wait, read on. Shall do service unto them that have put her in fear. Meaning they're going to they do service under, under who? The European nations. They're going to do service to them. All right? They're going to humble down to, to, the, to, the, to the ten horns. Okay, keep on reading. Verse 46. And thou Asia, thou art partaker of the hope of Babylon. So the Asia here is mainly talking about China. You understand? Because every goods that you have here in America, where is it made? It's made in China. So I'm about to show you all China destiny, how China going to be destroyed. Okay, so read it again. 
Yes, sir. And thou, Asia, thou art partaker of the hope of Babylon. So Asia been partaking in the hope of Babylon. Asia been getting rich off of the, the merch trading with America. All right? And the main Asia he's talking about here is China. Okay, it's many Asian countries, but the main one it's talking about here is China. Okay, and I'm going to show you all that. Keep on reading. And art the glory of her person. Woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her. Because China made herself just like America. That's why you know it's talking about China. The same thing America do, guess who do the same thing? China. You understand? America go over there in Africa and what? And buying up, taking over the land and the resources from the people. China go over there doing the same thing. You all understand? China making herself just like America. Read on. And has decked thy daughters in whoredom, that they might please and glory in thy lovers. Yeah, the Chinese is hoes too, man. They hoes too. What was I say? You a hoe too. You China, you a hoe too. I'm going to deal with you. Read on. Which have always desired to commit whoredom with thee. So this goes back to what? Go to Revelation t um, 18 and, and, and 5. America, because China, China have committed fornication or whoredom with America. You understand? China is the top one that commit whoredom with America. All nations did it, but China is one of the top nations that did, that is involved in the whoredom that America is, is, take, is doing. Read that for me. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse... Uh, it's verse 5? Verse 5. Yeah. No, verse 3. Verse 3. Yes, sir. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the kings of the earth commit fornication with China. Read on. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. The merchants of the earth is mainly talking about China. They're the number one merchant that trade with America. Everything you got on is made in China. Okay, read on. And I heard another voice. All right, so jump back to 2nd to Ezra. Jump back to 2nd Ezra. Don't worry, I'm going to cut it short. I just need a couple more minutes. I just want to touch on China being destroyed. Keep on reading. Uh, verse 48, 2nd Ezra. Book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 15, verse 48. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works. So God hate China. God hate America. China followed America, which was hated by God in all her works. Every, the technology, everything that America invented, China invented it. The architecture also. The architecture, how the buildings are built, the skyscrapers, all that. The same sex stuff, all that. China copies it also. Same thing. Yep. Read on. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions. Therefore, saith God, I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood, poverty, famine, okay. sword, and pestilence. All right, so now I want you to jump to verse, verse, um, verse 58. Verse 58. They that be in the mountains. This is talking about China, all right, because at this time, China have no military. Their military was destroyed. Okay, read on. They that be in the mountains shall die of hunger. Shall die of hunger, read on. And eat their own flesh and drink their own blood for very hunger, for very hunger of bread. So and that's what's going to happen in China. They're going to be suffering over there when World War Three taking place. Okay, read on. And thirst of water. Read on. Thou as unhappy shalt come through the sea. It says thou as unhappy. This is talking about who? This is talking about the U.S. Navy. You understand? That's what this is talking about. Though us unhappy shall what? Shall come through the sea. So the U.S. Navy going to come through the sea. Read on. And receive plagues again. Read on. And in the passage, they shall rush on the idle city. The idle city here is talking about Wuhan. <laughs> it's talking about China. What's some of them Chinese cities, man? Beijing. Beijing. Hong Kong. Shanghai. Wang Zhu, what's the one with the coronavirus? Wuhan, <laughs> you know? So it says what? Read it again. And in the passage, they shall rush on the idle city. They're going to rush on the idle city, read on. And shall destroy some portion. No, 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 read that again, read it again. 
Verse 60. And in the passage, they shall rush on the idle city. They shall rush. Now, read it from the top verse. I want you all to see what's taking place. Verse 59. Verse 58. They that be in the mountains shall die of hunger. Nah, jump back. Jump back. Dong, dong some more. Oh, 59. Yeah. Thou, as unhappy, shall come through the sea. Shall come through the sea. This is talking. This is letting you know how China going to be destroyed. Okay, America is going to go over there in China with their naval ships and their submarines, and they're going to destroy China, the cities in China. That's what's going to happen. Read that again. Thou, as unhappy, shall come through the sea. Read on. And receive plagues again. Read on. And in the passage, they shall rush on the idle city. The idle cities is these cities in China. Read on. And shall destroy some portion of thy land. And they're going to destroy some portion of the land of China. Read on. And consume part of thy glory. And they're going to consume part of China glory. Read on. And shall return to Babylon. And they shall what? Return to Babylon. And this is letting you know who going to do that. The American Navy. They're going to do that. And then they're going to return to Babylon. Read on. That was destroyed. And America is destroyed with nuclear bombs. But they're they going to probably be offshore just watching. You understand? This is the U.S. Navy. Okay? All right? And to show you all that's talking about the U.S. Navy, I want you to go to Jeremiah 48. I think verse 40. Jeremiah 48 verse 40. Get that and read that for me. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 48, verse 40. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, he shall fly as an eagle. He shall what? He shall fly as an eagle. He shall fly like an eagle. Who that talking about? It's talking about America. Okay, now, you know what? Go further up. Let's see what it's going into, man. Let's see what this is going into. What verse I want, man? Read two verses up. Yes, sir. Verse 38. There shall be lamentation. Generally upon all the housetops of Moab. It's talking about Moab Moab being destroyed. That's what it's talking about. Read on. And in the streets thereof. So in the streets thereof, there's going to be lamentation, meaning people going to be sad, crying, bawling. Okay, read on. For I have broken Moab like a vessel. So God said he have broken Moab. How he's going to broke Moab? He's going to use the United States Navy. Okay, to go over there and bum Drop nuclear bombs on certain cities in Moab. Okay, read on. Wherein, there, wherein no pleasure, saith the Lord. Read on. They shall howl, saying, how is it broken down? How have Moab turned the back with shame? How, 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 how um, Beijing turn into crap? You know what I mean? For real. Read on. So shall Moab be a derision and a dismaying to all them about him. That's verse 40. Verse 39. Read on. Verse 40. For thus saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord. This is telling you how Moab going to get destroyed. Read on. Behold, he shall fly as an eagle. He is talking about America. Okay. The he that shall fly as an eagle is talking about America. Because that is his symbol, the eagle. Okay, read on. And shall spread his wings. And over he shall spread what? His wings. Read on. Over Moab. Over Moab. That's talking about the... What we read in Second Ezra. That's letting you know who is going to destroy Moab. It's the American Navy. So go back and read that again. Go back and read that again. Um, and go back to Second Ezra Second and read Ezra that 15. again. Yeah, 15. Yes, sir. Book of Second Ezra, chapter 15, verse 47. Woe be unto thee, thou wretch. Because thou hast made thyself like unto her, and hast decked thy daughters in whoredom. Now, you're going back too far. Jump to verse 59. Oh, sh verse 59. Thou as unhappy shalt come through the sea and receive plagues again. So, it says what? Thou as unhappy shalt come through the sea and receive plagues again. So, America going to be unhappy because the military going to be destroyed. Okay, and even though American military is destroyed, the government is not going to be destroyed. They're going to be controlling the Navy or and certain, certain part of the military that was not destroyed from them underground bunkers that they got set up all over here in America. 
Yes, the US, the U.S. military and the U.S. government have underground shelter where they can live for 20 years just in case of a nuclear fallout. Okay, so they're going to be commanding their military from under there. And they're going to tell the military, go destroy China. The Navy, go destroy China. Okay, read on. And in the passage, they shall rush on the idle city and shall destroy some portion of thy land and consume part of thy glory and shall return to Babylon that was destroyed. Okay, so listen. When we read about the court, about thou hast decked thy daughters, the daughters is going into all these corporations that Moab got set up all over the world. You understand what I'm saying? Set up trading and so forth. That's what her daughters is going into. All right? Okay? So, all right, so what, what else I want? Um, keep on, jump to, jump to verse... Jump to 16 and verse 22. Okay? So that let you know how the, um, how China going to be destroyed. Okay? Now, you all want me to keep going or that's it? All right, all right, all right, all right. So I'm going to give you all another five minutes, yo. 22, verse 22. Jump to 16 and verse 22. What, I'm showing, what we're showing you all, remember the, the name of the class, all right? The name of the class is the war to end all wars. Okay? I'm showing you all what's going to happen to America. I'm showing you all what's going to happen to China. Um, we show you all what will start that war. It's going to be the controversy over Zion. Okay? So read. Um, so this is the aftermath. Keep Read verse 22. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 16, 16, verse 22. Verse 22. For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. So some people are going to die from hunger. And some people are going to die from sword, from the sword, meaning from the war that's going to be taking place. Read on. And the dead shall be cast out as dung, and there shall be no man to comfort them. So there will, they wouldn't have no man left to bury the dead people. Okay, would nobody be, because why? Read on. For the earth shall be wasted, and the cities shall be cast down. Because a lot of the cities going to be destroyed, and a lot of the earth, a lot, a lot of places on the earth going to be destroyed. To what? To the wars. To the wars that are going to take place in World War III. Every place is not going to be destroyed, but a lot of the cities and, the, and places will be destroyed through them wars. Read on. Verse 24. There shall be no man left to till the earth. And there ain't going to be no man left to till the earth. You understand? Nobody left to what? To cut grass and farm and all of that. Okay, read on. And to sow it. The trees shall give fruit, and who shall gather them? So the, the trees, the fruits going to grow on the tree, and all the, all the fruits going to just drop on the ground because they ain't going to get nobody there to gather the fruits. You understand? What are we touching on? The wars to end all wars. Okay, read on. The grapes shall ripen, and who shall tread them? Read on. For all places shall be desolate of men. Shall be desolate of men. All places going to be desolate, desolate of men. Why? Read on. So that one man shall desire to see another. So you're going to be, you're going to have one man and he's going to be like, damn, I ain't seen nobody in, in a year or in a while. You know, I ain't seen nobody in months. One man going to desire to see somebody else. Read on. And to hear his voice. And to just hear somebody speak. Read on. For of a city, there shall be ten left. For of a city, there shall be what? Ten left. There gonna only be ten left. Read on. And two of the field. And in the field, only two gonna be left. Read on. Which shall hide themselves in the thick groves. Because this is how they gonna escape. They gonna hide themselves in the forest and on and in the rocks and in the mountains. That's how they gonna escape that destruction. Them destruction that's gonna take place. People gonna go into the mountains and on up and underground. Okay, that's what it means. Read that again. For or all in the sea. You know what I mean? In, you know, for real. But you know some of them shit when them bombs hit them waves gonna <laughs> the last twenty years. Yeah. So so read that again. For of a city there shall be ten left and two of the field, which shall hide themselves in the thick groves, and in the clefts of the rocks. And in the clefts of the rocks, read on. As in an orchard of olives upon every tree, there are left three or four olives. Read on. Or, as when a vineyard is gathered, there are left some clusters of them that diligently seek through the vi vineyard. Read on. Verse 31. 
Even so in those days, there shall be three or four left by them that search their houses with the sword. So you're going to have three or four left of them that search houses with a sword, meaning they're going to be running up in your house to steal your, your food and so forth. Okay, if you got food and so forth, people are going to be running up in your house. Okay, you're going to be the walking dead. You're going to be the book of Eli. Mm -hmm. Okay, read on. And the earth shall be laid waste, and the fields thereof shall wax old. And the fields thereof shall wax old. Meaning, you see when you watch at I Am Legend, you see how the cities grow up with grass and all of that and so forth. That's after the war, you know. That's, this is talking about after them bombs drop and all of that. Time, time going by, you know what I mean? Read on. And her ways and all her paths shall grow full of thorns. And so this is what's going to happen. All the paths, all the roads going to be grown. Thorns going to grow up, grow all over. Okay, read on. Because no man shall travel there through. Because there's nobody to, pa to travel there to. I'm, letting, I'm giving you all a picture of what the future going to look like. Read. Verse 33. So the you all you all could stay there twerking, you all on TikTok. Hey, sisters up there twerking, niggas out there, brothers out there, all they studying about is what? Um, all kind of dumb stuff, man. The world is about to come to an end. You understand? That's what's taking place. And even the little war that you see going on in Iran right now, I mean Iran in um in, in Ukraine, that little war. That's preparing certain things, putting certain things in place. Because what's taking place in Ukraine, guess what, how, what, what that affect? That affect the food supply. You know what I mean? That affect the oil supply. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's, a, um, it's, it's basically, you know how, um, how Joe Biden said, Oh, I put sanction on you. I put sanction on you, Russia. But when they put sanction on Russia... It's affecting America even more because gas rising up to ten dollars. And let me, I'm, I'm going to show show you all some concerning the American dollar. The only thing that make the American dollar value today is because it's being used to trade to buy oil. You understand? That's it. That's the only thing making the American dollar valuable. You remove the oil from it, and the nations is not using it to trade to buy oil no more. The dollar is going to collapse. That's why this week, the uh, executive order was signed for what? For America to come up with a digital cryptocurrency. You all pay attention to what's taking place, man. Soon then, that American dollar is not going to worth nothing. You all pay attention to what's going on. Anyway, let's jump back and finish this up, man. I'm almost done, man. Keep on reading. Verse 33. The virgin shall mourn. The virgin shall mourn. You, you sisters are single. You all think you're all mourning right now. <laughs> the scripture says the virgin shall mourn, read on. Having no bridegroom. Because there's going to be no brothers around, no dudes around for, to, for them to get married in that time. This is talking about the nations, you understand? This ain't talking about Israel, our people, those of us that save. It's not talking about us, it's talking about the other nations and them. Okay, read on. The women shall mourn, having no husbands. Why? Why they ain't got no husbands? Keep on reading. Their daughters shall mourn, having no helpers. In the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed. In the wars, in World War III, their bridegrooms going to be destroyed. Read on. And their husbands shall perish of famine. And their husbands shall perish of famine. Okay, read on. Verse 35. Hear now these things and understand them. So you, you brothers and sisters, you all hear these things. That, that, that me and Deacon I done went over. And I hope you all understand it. Okay, read on. Ye servants of the Lord. This is talking up to you all, you servants of the Lord, you Israelites. You all hear these things and understand it. It's going to come to pass. Read on. Behold, the word of the Lord receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. Hear the word of the Lord and believe it, man. Okay, read on. Verse 37. Behold, the plagues draw nigh and the are not slack. The plagues is going to come, and it's not going to be slack. Whether you believe or not, it's not going to stop what's going to take place. You could get mad and leave IUIC. It does, it's not going to stop what's going to take place. You could talk about, I'm doing my own thing. I ain't following no man. I ain't following no man. I ain't following these dudes out here. You know what? I'm going to do my... You could do what the hell you want. 
Our job was to, what, to guide you to, and to show you what's coming. You know what I mean? You all want to go do your own thing. You all want to be rebellious. You all don't want to fall in or um, don't want to follow orders and so forth. Good rhythms. To hell with you, man. Straight up, we ain't got no time. The time that's coming on the the things that is coming on this earth, I'm telling you all, we ain't got no time for no foolishness to play with none of you all, man. I'm just letting you all know straight up. You understand? So, um, Deke, you, you want to add something? Yeah, just real quick. Uh, um, shout out to. Uh, um, Ab Deacon Abiel again regarding the warships. The carriers and warships can stay out, out out to sea for 20 years if they have to. Going back to attacking China when it's destroyed. You're going to have carriers and warships still on the sea because remember, the earth is mostly water. New skin and everything. So you're going to have sea um, warships still traveling around. When they get off them ships and go to that land, people are going to be dead. But you got to dock eventually. So that's an example. All right? Yeah, man. Yeah, the water gonna be messed up too, right? Yeah, the water you ain't going wormwood gonna hit the water when you read Revelation. You understand? At the wormwood, which is that, which is them nuclear bombs hitting the water, gonna poison the water. Okay, so all of these things is what's gonna take place on the earth, brothers and sisters. Okay, so with that, yeah. Hope you all, I hope you all are a little scared. It's about, I'm trying to make you all scared. All right, that's what me and Deacon Knight and trying to do. We're trying to make you all scared. I hope you all scared. Yeah. Be He's afraid. Esau be very afraid. <laughs> you too, Esau. Be very afraid, Esau. Well, Esau you know? knows. So say he puts it on his movies. He puts all the um, the um the post post war movies. He has uh, um, I Am Legend, um, Walking Dead. You always have these post uh, even Book of Eli. These post apocalyptic post apocalyptic movies he has out because his 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 witches his sources they've seen this. They saw the app. They saw the aftermath, and they've seen um the, the beginning also. But they're not going to tell you that. That's why they're going in space. Yep. They're going in space. They're hiding in the mountains. They're going underground because they've seen this, and they can't stop it either. All right. All right. Well, so with that, we hope you all got some out of the class. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth